fifth place for 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. Ricardo Zonta. 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67. Mika Hakkinen. 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77. David Coulthard. 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87. Michael Schumacher. 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97. Rubens Barrichello. 98, 99, 100. Second, seconds, tenth, tenths, hundredth, hundredths, thousandth. Heinz Harold Frensen. Thousandths, hour, hours, minute, minutes, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Piano Trulli. Sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth. 15th, Teddy Irvine, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, Johnny Herbert, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, 32nd, 33rd, 34th, 35th, Ralph Schumacher, a 15th place for 36th, 37th, 38th, 39th, 40th, 41st, 42nd, 43rd, 44th, 45th, Jensen Button, 46th, 47th, 48th, 49th, 50th, 51st, 52nd, 53rd, 54th, 55th, Giancarlo Fisichella, 56th, 57th, 58th, 59th, 60th, 61st, 62nd, 63rd, 64th, 65th, Alexander Woods, 65th, 66th, 66th, 67th, 67th, 68th, 68th, 69th, 69th, 70th. Jonah Lacey. 70th, 71st, 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 72nd, 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 73rd. Nick Heidfeld. 74th, 75th, 76th. 77th, 78th, 79th, 80th, 81st, 82nd, 83rd. Pedro Deniz. 84th, 85th, 86th, 87th, 88th, 89th, 90th, 91st, 92nd, 93rd. Mikasalo. 94th, 95th, 96th, 97th, 98th, 99th, 100th, penultimate, final, last. Pedro de la Rosa. Lap number, lap. The A1 ring, Buenos Aires, Catalonia, Hockenheim, the Hungara ring, 100th, Imola, Manicur, Jos Verstappen, Melbourne, Monte Carlo, Montreal, Monza, the Nürburgring, Sao Paulo, Sepang, Silverstone, Spa Francochon, Spa. Mark Zanet, 16th position for Suzuka, Albert Park, Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache, Autodromo Ciudad de Buenos Aires, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, Interlagos, Remus Curve, Gossa Curve, Niki Lauda Curve, Powerhorse Curve, Gastel Mazacane, Castrol Curve, A1 Curve, Jochen Rint Curve, La Caxa, Bank de Sabadell, Campsa, Repsol, Sayat, Renault, Elf, Zach Villeneuve, Nissan, Verth, Jim Clark Curve, Ost Curve, Nord Curve, Sud Curve, Sax Curve, Ayrton Senna Curve, Ajip Curve, Turn 1, Ricardo Zonta, Turn 2, Turn 3, Turn 4, Turn 5, Turn 6, Turn 7, Turn 8, Turn 9, Turn 10, Turn 11, Hakkinen. Turn 12. Turn 13. Turn 14. Turn 15. Turn 16. Tamburello. Varianti Bassa. Rivazza. Varianti Alta. Piratella. Coulthard. Toza. Villeneuve. Aqua Minerale. Grande Courbe. Estoril. Adelaide. Chateau d'Eau. Imola. Golf. Nürburgring. Schumacher. The Chicane. The 180 degree corner. Lise. Lakeside Drive. Clark Chicane. Golf Course Corner, Ascari, Stewart, Prost, Brabham Jones Chicane, Barrichello, Hellas Corner, Whiteford Corner, Marina Corner, Albert Road Corner, Sports Centre Corner, Waite Corner, Lauda, Hill, 
Saint Devot, Tabac, Frenson, Beau Rivage, Casino, Portier, Mirabeau, Lowe's Hairpin, Tunnel, Massonet, La Rascas, Anthony Nogues, Grand Hotel Hairpin, Trolley, The Swimming Pool Complex, The New Chicane, Virage du Casino, Virage Senna, Pont de la Concorde, Pitts Hairpin, Dunlop Curve, Ford Curve, Castrol S, Coca-Cola Curve, Irvine, 17th for Vidal Chicane, RTL Curve, Bit Curve, Hatson Backboggan, Rita Aposta, Curva du Sol, Hunau, Pico de Pato, Megulo, Ferradura, Herbert, Decida du Loga, Senna S's, Pinerino, Laranca, Yuncao, Subida dos Boxes, Club Corner, Abbey Curve, Bridge Bend, Luffield, Schumacher, Woodcut Corner, Cops Corner, Maggots, Chapel Curve, Hanger Strait, Stowe Corner, Vale, Beckett's, Priory, Stavolo, Button, Fania, Rivage, Malmedy, Lecombe, Kemmel, Pouin, Radion, La Source, Eau Rouge, Blanchiment, Fissy Keller, The Bus Stop, Red, Green, Blue, Yellow, Orange, Silver, Gold, Black, White, Woods, Black and White, Checkered. The Brazilian Grand Prix ends with a great victory for Takes the Canadian Grand Prix, Takes the French Grand Prix, Takes Silverstone's Checkered Flag. The Hungarian Grand Prix has been won by the victor in Italy. Wins here in Austria. The Luxembourg Grand Prix has seen a fabulous win for Alesi. Japan has witnessed a Grand Prix win for has won is first. San Marino sees a 2000 Grand Prix triumph for is first. Second place goes to second place. Two comes in third. Fourth spot for fifth is Heidfeld. Sixth will be Next is next to cross the line. Finishes way down the order. It's, there's, yes, it's, look at Argentina, Australia, Diniz, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Britain, Canada, France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Japan, Salo, Luxembourg, Malaysia, Monaco, San Marino, Spain, Europe, the Argentine, the Australian, the Austrian, the Belgian, De La Rosa, got 18th. The Brazilian, the British, the Canadian, the French, the German, the Hungarian, the Italian, the Japanese, the Luxembourg, the Malaysian, Verstappen, the Monaco, the San Marino, the Spanish, the European, second, seconds, tenth, tenths, hundredth. Hundredths, Genet, thousandth, thousandths, hour, hours, minute, minutes, lap, Ramos curve, Gerser curve, Nicky Lauda curve, Mazacane, power horse curve, Castrol curve, A1 curve, Jochen Rint curve, La Caixa, Bonk de Sabadal, Campsa, Repsol, Seat, Renault, Villeneuve, Elf, Jim Clark Curve, Ost Curve, Nord Curve, Sud Curve, Sachs Curve, Ayrton Senna Curve, Turn 1, Turn 2, Turn 3, Zonta, Turn 4, Turn 5, Turn 6, Turn 7, Turn 8, Turn 9, Turn 10, Turn 11, Turn 12, Turn 13, Having to start from the pit lane is turn 14, turn 15, turn 16, Tamburello, Varianta Bassa, Rivazza, Varianta Alta, Piratella, Tosa, Villeneuve. He's going to start from the pit lane. Aqua Minerale, Grande Courbe, Estoril, Adelaide, Chateau d'Eau, Imola, Golf, Nürburgring. The Chicane, Lakeside Drive, Hackinen, Clark Chicane, Golf Course Corner, Ascari, Stewart, Prost, Brabham Jones Chicane, Brabham Chicane, Jones Chicane, Hellas Corner, Whiteford Corner, Coulthard, Marina Corner, Albert Road Corner, Saint Devot, Tabac, Beau Rivage, Casino, Portier, Mirabeau, Lowe's, Tunnel, Schumacher, 19th will be Massonet, 
La Rascas, Anthony Nogue, Virage du Casino, Virage Senna, Pont de la Concorde, The Parabolica, The Retifilio, Varianta Ascari, Curva del Violone, Barrichello, Varianta del Retifilio, Curva Grande, The Rosia Chicane, The Lesmo Benz, Curva del Saralio, The Ascari Benz, The Violone, the Retifilio, Rosia, Lesmo 1, Frenson, Lesmo 2, The Seraglio, Dunlop Curve, Ford Curve, Castrol S, Coca-Cola Curve, Vidal Chicane, RTL Curve, Bit Curve, Hatzenbach Boden, Trolley, Reta Aposto, Curvo do Sol, Hunau, Pico de Pato, Megulo, Ferradura, Decida do Loga, Club Corner, Abbey Curve, Bridge Bend, Irvine, Bridge, Luffield, Woodcote Corner, Woodcote, Cops Corner, Cops, Maggots, Chapel Curve, Chapel, Hanger Straight, Herbert, Stowe Corner, Stowe, Vale, Red, Green, Blue, Yellow, Orange, Silver, Gold, Schumacher, Black, White, Black and white, checkered. The new millennium sees no changes to the McLaren lineup. Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard will be aiming to repeat the success of the last two years that seen Hakkinen take the driver's title on both occasions. However, McLaren are going to be disappointed that Ferrari pipped them to the Constructors' title in 99. Injury spoiled Michael Schumacher's challenge last year, so we'll never know how close the title might have been had he not missed so many races. For 2000, he's more than able support in the shape of Rubens Barrichello, and Ferrari will be hoping that this partnership will enable them to retain the Constructors' title. Jordan have made great progress, finishing 4th and 3rd in the 98 and 99 Constructors' Championships. Last year, Heinz Harold Frenson was a revelation, with two Grand Prix wins and third place in the Drivers' Championship. This year, Jordan have teamed him with Jarno Trulli, the young talent from Italy who showed great potential with the Prost team in 1999. Jaguar Racing will be hoping for a flying start to their first Grand Prix campaign. They've certainly chosen experienced drivers with last year's runner-up Eddie Irvine and Johnny Herbert. Ralph Schumacher's once again the Williams lead. But this year, support comes from Jensen Button, a young British driver who's made the move up from Formula 3. Williams will be hoping that BMW engines can push them back to the levels of success they enjoyed a few years ago. No changes for Benetton this season, as Giancarlo Fisichella and Alexander Wurz continue their partnership. Button, Grand Prix veteran Jean Alesi, will spearhead the Prost Challenge this year. He's joined by newcomer Nick Heidfeld, who graduates to Formula One as last year's Formula 3000 champion. With Jean Alesi's departure to Prost, Mika Salos joined Pedro Deniz in the Sauber team for 2000. Jos Verstappen has been drafted into the Arrows team alongside Pedro de la Rosa. Arrows are still without a Grand Prix win, so they'll be hoping these two can break the team's long-standing duck. Marc Genet and Gaston Mazacane are going to have their work cut out this year as they try to earn precious points for those perennial strugglers, Minardi. BAR failed to live up to expectations in its debut season last year. Jacques Villeneuve and Ricardo Zonta We'll be hoping the new Honda engine can help BAR be more reliable than it was in 1999. A great start. They're all away cleanly. They've all got away. Not too many incidents. One or two minor shunts at the back, but they're all away. Oh, dear. It's a messy, messy start. Oh, no. It's mayhem. Fissy Keller. Well, this is one of those terrible starts. Who is going to stamp their authority on this race? Well, what a dramatic start to the Grand Prix. It all looks a bit amateur hour at the moment. Gets away quickly. A great start there for... Gets a good start. Setting the pace. Setting a cracking pace. Gets an early lead. 
An excellent start by Woods. Bad start for... Here we go. The race begins. Now, who's first to show? We're off to a flyer. Off we go, then. No one could have predicted that. He worked hard for pole position. Now, can he keep the lead? A world championship point to be won here. Should get one point from today. If it stays like this, it'll be two points for Alessi. It'll be 20th for... He'll get two points if he keeps this up. It looks like three points are coming his way. Could get three points here. At this rate, he'll take four points today. It looks like four points for... Should take six points here. He'll be taking six points if he keeps second place. If he stays in front, it'll be ten championship points for... He'll get ten world championship points if he can hold on. If he keeps this up, we could be looking at the new world champion. Heidfeld, are we looking at the new world champion? He's about to win the world championship. Could go to the top of the championship leaderboard. Could go to the top of the championship. This'll mean a move up the championship for... Could consolidate his championship bid today. This won't do his championship hopes any harm at all. It's not looking good for the championship. This does not bode well for the world championship. For the championship... This is a bad result. Diniz, I'm afraid he'll lose his lead in the championship. Not a good day for... Slips up in the championship. No chance of the championship now for... Well, what a shame. That's the title out of reach. Isn't going to make this easy. There's no way he's going to let him pass. He's putting up a great fight for track position is making sure he sticks to the racing line. It looks like he's struggling to hold on to his position. Salo is struggling to stay in front. He's using the whole track width to stay in front. He's weaving from side to side in front of his rival. Careful, Damon. Laps another back marker. Has just been lapped. Well, he's moved up a place following the retirement of... He moves up a place due to the retirement of... He moves up a place after the retirement of... Retires. And it's another place gained. Goes out and he moves up a place. De La Rosa. That retirement means he goes up to pits and he moves up a place. Moves up a place as his rival goes for a pit stop. It was Hackinen in 98, Irvine in 99, and surely we'll know who'll be the next to win the Australian Grand Prix. Mika Hackinen's won here the two previous years. Can he make it a hat-trick in 2000? 1998 winner David Coulthard finished second here last year behind Michael Schumacher. Will Coulthard be on the podium again this year? David Coulthard held on to win at Silverstone last year, although Eddie Irvine pressed him hard. The Spanish Grand Prix seen the McLarens dominate the past two years, with Hakkinen and Coulthard finishing first and second both times. Surely the chances of a repeat must be very slim. The European Grand Prix belonged to the Stuart Ford team last year, thanks to Johnny Herbert and Rubens Barrichello finishing a superb first and third. Things change quickly in Formula One, though, and Stuart Ford is no more. If Herbert can repeat the feat then he'll be doing so in the colours of Jaguar. Recent winners, Mika Hakkinen and Michael Schumacher, must be the favourites to make the pace here in Monaco. Verstappen, last year, Michael Schumacher failed to make it three successive Canadian Grand Prix wins as he hit a wall midway through the race. Mika Hakkinen took full advantage and maximum points. The French Grand Prix of 1999 saw Heitz Harold Frenson take the honours in the Jordan. David Coulthard's finished second here in the last two seasons. Can he go one better this time? McLaren took 16 points here in 98, with Ferrari matching this total in 99, thanks to Irvine and Salo. McLaren managed a comparatively easy 1-2 here in 1999, with Mika Hakkinen taking the chequered flag ahead of David Coulthard. David Coulthard outpaced Mika Hakkinen and the rest of the field at Spa last year, I'm sure he'd settle for a repeat performance. Frenson steered Jordan to victory at Monza last year. Ferrari will have been disappointed with only third place on their home turf. And Schumacher and Barrichello will be under immense pressure to perform here.
Let's hope that Indianapolis provides us with some lasting memories from its inaugural Grand Prix. Hakkinen is the undisputed champion of Suzuka in recent years. Can he do it again? The debut of the Sepang track in 1999 marked the return of Michael Schumacher from injury. Schumacher finished second behind Irvine in what turned out to be a race of brilliant tactics rather than intense excitement. Genet, more a refinement on last year rather than a revolutionary new design, the 2000 season McLaren has a new, lighter engine from Mercedes. This season, McLaren have chosen to stick with their distinctive black and silver livery. Ferrari's new challenger, the F1 2000, is a natural progression from last year's successful F39. Will it take Schumacher to the long-expected World Driver Championship? Ever ones for tradition, the Ferraris will once again run in their world-famous scarlet livery. This year's Jordan, named the EJ10 to honour Team Boss Eddie Jordan and the team's 10th season, sports a brighter yellow livery. Note the distinctive triangular air intake above the driver on the Jordan car. It's a welcome return to Formula One for the distinctive British Racing Green livery adopted by the all-new Jaguar team. Look at the leaping cat of Jaguar, showing proud on the distinctive green of this new team. Let's hope they do its heritage justice. The new BMW V10 engine powers this year's Williams. Hopes are high that this will turn the fortunes of the team. The dark blue and white livery of BMW marks a fresh start for the Williams team. Mazakane, this year's Benetton, reflects a back-to-basics approach from the veteran team. A simpler, lighter and aerodynamically efficient package. The traditional blue livery of Benetton returns for another year of racing. Prost joins the dot-com craze with a big internet sponsor this year. An all-new Peugeot V10 engine completes the new Prost package. Hopefully, a successful cross between top cars of previous years. The Swiss Sauber team's hoping for good things this year, making use of the reliable engine from last year's Ferrari. The now traditional split blue and green livery of Sauber returns again on a new car. This year, the focus has been on aerodynamic improvements. Arrows have this year adopted a striking orange livery in honour of their new sponsor. In testing, the Arrows team produced some great times with their new car, but will this be reflected in their race performance, which is what really counts? Minardi's sponsors have obviously had an influence on their livery this year. Bright yellow. The Italians at Minardi will be turning to their phrase books this year with a Spanish major sponsor and two Spanish-speaking drivers. Villeneuve, BAR have seen sense this year and dropped their split personality, and the results are much cleaner white and silver livery. BAR have scored a great coup this year, tying up the Honda engine deal, and they're hoping that improved reliability will bring them success may well be on its last legs. Failure, as always, hard to accept. Looks rocky. Could be on its way out. Looks to be in trouble. Seems to be running well. No, no, wait, I take that back. Well, all's not well there. Definitely in trouble. Zonta, definitely having problems. Struggling by the looks of it. The McLaren, the Ferrari, the Jordan, the Jaguars, the Williams, the Benetton, the Prost, the Sauber, Mika Hakkinen. 21st is going to be the Arrows, the Minardi, the BAR, a fabulous car in prime condition, having a good race, in excellent shape, in fine fettle, looks good, durable as ever. David Coulthard, looks good to me, an improving car, looking good, showing well, the McLaren, the Ferrari, the Jordan, the Jaguar, the Williams, the Benetton, Michael Schumacher. The Prost, the Sauber, the Arrows, the Minardi, the BAR. With 76 points last year, Mika Hakkinen secured his second successive world championship. At the moment, the Finn is just unstoppable. David Coulthard managed 48 points and fourth place in last year's Drivers' Championship. Whilst he's been playing second fiddle to Hakkinen for a long time, 
there's no doubting his ability and he must feel that his time will come soon. Despite last year's injury, Michael Schumacher still managed fifth in the Drivers' Championship. Schumacher's already a legend in Formula One and people will be expecting him to push Hakkinen hard. Rubens Barrichello certainly earned his contract with Ferrari after a fine season with Stewart last year. He must feel that now's his big chance to make a charge for the championship. Heinz Harold Frentzen had a fine season for Jordan last year and he'll be looking to improve on his two wins and third place overall. Rubens Barrichello! Jarno Trulli will be looking to improve on his seven championship points from last year. Although some may say that Eddie Irvine wouldn't have finished second last year had it not been for his teammate's injury, there's no denying that he's an extremely skillful driver. His 74 points were a testament to that. Johnny Herbert's no newcomer to Formula One, and last year he scored 15 points. He'll be hoping the Jaguar cars can live up to the name that's made them successful in other motorsports. Although he's yet to win a Grand Prix, Ralph Schumacher managed a creditable 35 points and 6th place in the Drivers' Championship last year. I'm sure Williams would be more than happy just to see Jensen Button get amongst the points, but the young Englishman may well have other ideas. Giancarlo Fisichella hasn't had much luck with Benetton so far, managing just 16 and 13 points in the last two seasons. He's regarded by many as a hot prospect, though, and hopefully we'll see him climbing up the championship table this year. Alexander Wurz had a disappointing season last year, finishing with only three points. 1999 was Jean Alesi's worst ever in Formula One. He only managed two points in the whole season. This year, he's left Sauber for Prost, and he'll be eager to prove that he still has what it takes to compete at the top level. Nick Heidfeld will be hoping for plenty of points to repay the Prost team for giving him his first crack at Formula One. Pedro Deniz had a solid, if not inspiring, season for Sauber last year, and must feel he can better his total of three points this time. Heinz Harold Frensen, Spaniard Pedro de la Rosa, has an impeccable pedigree in the junior formulae, and his engineering background makes him very strong technically. Jos Verstappen has promised much but delivered little since his 1994 Formula One debut. With only 11 points to his name in that time, He'll be hoping that he can get his Formula One career back on track with arrows. Mark Genet used to be an accountant, but he gave it up to become a driver. Gaston Mazacane is a bit of an unknown quantity, and some will say Minardi have taken a big chance on him. He'll be looking to silence any critics in his first full season. In 1997, Jacques Villeneuve won an incredible seven Grand Prix, securing him the championship. Now that BAR have Honda on board, Villeneuve will be keen to get back to winning ways. The young Brazilian Ricardo Zonta had an extremely poor season last year. Mika Hakkinen, David Coulthard, Michael Schumacher, Rubens Barrichello, Jarno Trulli, Heinz Harold Frensen, Jarno Trulli, Teddy Irvine, Johnny Herbert, Ralph Schumacher, Jensen Button, Giancarlo Fisichella, Alexander Wurz, Jean Alesi, Nick Heidfeld, Teddy Irvine, Pedro Deniz, Mika Salo, Pedro De La Rosa, Jos Verstappen, Marc Genet, Gaston Mazacane, Jacques Villeneuve, Ricardo Zonta, Mika Hakkinen, David Coulthard, Johnny Herbert, Michael Schumacher, Rubens Barrichello, Heinz Harold Frensen, Jarno Trulli, Teddy Irvine, Johnny Herbert, Ralph Schumacher, Jensen Button, Giancarlo Fisichella, Alexander Wurz, Ralph Schumacher, Jorna Lacey, Nick Heidfeld, Pedro Deniz, Mika Salo, Pedro de la Rosa, Jos Verstappen, Marc Genet, Gaston Mazacane, Jacques Villeneuve, Ricardo Zonta, Jensen Button, Hakkinen, Coulthard, Schumacher, Barrichello, Frensen, Trulli, Irvine, Herbert, Schumacher, Button, Giancarlo Fisichella, takes fifth, Fisichella, Wurz, Alesi, Heidfeld, Diniz, Salo, De La Rosa, Verstappen, Genet, Mazacane, Alexander Wurz, Fielmerv, Zonta, Hakkinen, Coulthard, Schumacher, Barrichello, 
Frenson, Trulli, Irvine, Herbert, Jonah Lacey, Schumacher, Barton, Fissy Keller, Wurtz, Alacy, Heidfeld, Diniz, Salo, De La Rosa, Verstappen, Nick Heidfeld, Genet, Mazzacane, Villeneuve, Zonta, the Brazilian Grand Prix, ends with a great victory for San Marino, sees a 2000 Grand Prix triumph for the Hungarian Grand Prix has been won by Japan has witnessed a Grand Prix win for takes the 2000 Grand Prix here in Australia takes Silverstone's checkered flag Pedro Diniz wins the 2000 Spanish Grand Prix takes the European Grand Prix seals the 2000 Grand Prix here in Monaco takes the Canadian Grand Prix takes the French Grand Prix, wins here in Austria, takes the 2000 Grand Prix here at Hockenheim, takes the 2000 Belgian Grand Prix, takes the 2000 Grand Prix here in Italy, wins the first Indianapolis Grand Prix for 40 years. Mikasalo wins the Malaysian Grand Prix. In pole position is, at the front of the grid is, next to him is, in second place is, sitting in the third grid slot is, in fourth is, fourth position is, fifth place for, in sixth spot is, Pedro de la Rosa, seventh place for, in eighth, Ninth position for, 10th place for, 11th is, 12th place for, in 13th place we see, 14th place is, a 15th place for, 16th position for, Jos Verstappen, 17th for, 19th will be, it'll be 20th for, 21st is going to be, 22nd will be, last of all will be, last but not least, someone's got to start last, today it's, and starting right at the back will be, is on pole. Marc Zanet is alongside on row one, is second on the grid, has secured third place, sits in third place, is third, is fourth, takes fourth place, takes fifth, gets sixth place, takes seventh. Gaston Mazzacane is eighth, sits in ninth, will start tenth, is eleventh sits on 12th, is in 13th place, takes 14th, starts in 15th, will start 16th, is 17th. Jacques Villeneuve gets 6th place, got 18th, is going 19th, starts 20th, he's 21st, starts 22nd, will have to start from the back of the grid. The lap records held by Heinz Harold Frensen. 1 minute 30.585 seconds in his Williams Renault in 1997, and that's before Groove Tires. Eddie Irvine took his first Grand Prix win here in 1999, driving for Ferrari. Mika Hakkinen won his second consecutive Brazilian Grand Prix last season, but Villeneuve's 1 minute 18.397 seconds lap record from 1997 still stands. In the 1997 Williams, Heinz Harold Frensen set the fastest lap, 1 minute 25.531 seconds. Last year, Michael Schumacher went on to win at Imola after race leader Mika Hakkinen got it wrong on lap 17. Michael Schumacher broke his leg here last year, which stopped him from repeating his 1998 success. But he still holds the lap record of 1 minute 24.475 seconds. Ricardo Zonta! Last year's Grand Prix at Barcelona was all about McLaren versus Ferrari. Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard were first and second, with the fastest lap to Mika at 125.496 miles an hour. Michael Schumacher beat teammate Eddie Irvine to third place. The lap record of 1 minute 18.805 was put up by Heinz Harold Frensen in 1997 in his Williams Renault, although it was Canadian Jacques Villeneuve who won the race. The Nürburgring provided the Stuart Ford team with their first Grand Prix victory last year, with Johnny Herbert driving. Rubens Barrichello was a superb third in his Stuart, with Trulli in the Prost sandwiched in second place between the two Stuart drivers. It was a 1-2 and maximum points here for Ferrari last year. 
despite Hakkinen beating Michael Schumacher's lap record with a best lap of 1 minute 22.259 seconds, he could only take third place in the McLaren Mercedes. Heinz Harald Frensen had a lucky escape from a nasty crash here in 1999 after a battle with Fisichella. The Italian went on to finish second. Mika Hakkinen had already sewn up a strange race after rival and pole position winner Michael Schumacher exited the track and the race on lap 29. With six home wins under his belt, Alain Prost is synonymous with this circuit. Although Nigel Mansell's held the lap record of 1 minute 17.070 since 1992. In 1999, Jordan's clever one-stop strategy paid off, as Heinz Harald Frensen took maximum points despite the weather and a storming drive from Hakkinen, who came from 14th on the grid, eventually to finish second. The lap record of 1 minute 11.814 seconds was set by Jacques Villeneuve in a Williams Renault in 1997. He went on to win the first ever Grand Prix held at this track. Eddie Irvine took the honours for Ferrari last year, although the race was notable for a collision between David Coulthard and teammate Mika Hakkinen, which cost the Finn dearly. After ending up near the back of the field, Hakkinen had a remarkable drive, and he eventually finished third behind Coulthard. A brilliant drive. David Coulthard clocked 1 minute 45.270 seconds in the McLaren for the lap record in 1998, but last year he could only finish fifth as Eddie Irvine and Mika Salo took all the glory for Ferrari. Nigel Mansell's Williams Renault 1992 lap record of 1 minute 18.308 remains unbeaten. In 1999, Mika Hakkinen led from start to finish in a race he had to win to keep Eddie Irvine at bay in the championship. Alain Prost's lap record of 1 minute 51.095 from 1993 still stands at Spa. In 1999, David Coulthard got past Hakkinen early on and managed to hold on to collect 10 points. The lap record of 1 minute 24.808 went to Mika Hakkinen in his McLaren Mercedes in 1997, although the race was won by teammate David Coulthard. In 1999, Hakkinen span off after leading for half the race. Heinz Harold Frensen went on to take the chequered flag first, despite late pressure from Ralph Schumacher in the Williams. The start of the penultimate lap. In 1997, Michael Schumacher won the Japanese Grand Prix, but the fastest lap time of 1 minute 38.942 was put up by Heinz Harald Frensen in his Williams Renault. Current world champion Mika Hakkinen won here in both 1998 and 99. It was Ferrari who dominated the inaugural race at Sepang in 1999, despite being disqualified for a technical infringement. Fortunately, though, they were given a reprieve, and Eddie Irvine took first place thanks to a brilliant tactical race by Michael Schumacher, who just returned to racing following his injury at Silverstone. Schumi also set the lap record, with a time of 1 minute 40.267 seconds. Is having an absolute nightmare. Looks like a novice out there today. Must be out of pull-off visors. He's all over the place. He's going from bad to worse. Just can't seem to concentrate at all. Must be testing the patience of his team to their limits. He'll be lucky to finish at all if he continues like this. This is the penultimate lap. Must be looking for someone in the crowd because he doesn't seem to be watching where he's going. Surely he's got to retire soon. He can't go on like this without doing some serious damage. I've just run out of things to say about this performance. It's simply terrible. What does he think he's doing? I can't believe he's making the same basic errors over and over again. I just can't bear to watch anymore. Has he actually got his hands on the wheel at all? I've had enough of watching this. I think I'll give Des Lynam a call. 
In case you've just switched over, you're just in time to see the worst drive I've ever seen in all my years as a Formula One commentator. Although the Indianapolis Grand Prix track borrows a sizable slice of the famous oval used in the Indy 500, the new design has enough twists and turns to provide a serious challenge to the Formula One veteran and novice alike. We're on the penultimate lap now. 72 laps of 4.29 kilometers really tests the driver's capabilities. 62 laps of the 4.93 kilometers track is nail-biting stuff. The 6.97 kilometer circuit is lapped 44 times. This 5.77 kilometer Monza circuit is the fastest in Formula One. The Italian Grand Prix takes 53 laps. This brand new 4.2 kilometer layout at Indianapolis will see 73 laps of action before a winner's declared. The Sepang Formula One circuit is 5.54 kilometers long and the Grand Prix will be contested over 58 laps. 72 laps of 2.67 miles really tests the driver's capabilities. 62 laps of the 2.47 mile track is nail-biting stuff. The 4.33 mile circuit is lapped 44 times. This 3.6 mile Monza circuit is the fastest in Formula One. The Italian Grand Prix takes 53 laps. Just one more lap after this one. This brand new 2.55 mile layout at Indianapolis will see 73 laps of action before a winner's declared. The Sepang Formula One circuit is 3.33 miles long and the Grand Prix will be contested over 58 laps. There's quite a bit of surface water around now. It's getting a bit wet out there. A good time to rethink tyre strategies. The rain's definitely going to cause problems if it persists. Braking distances are going to be just that bit longer in these wet conditions. It must be getting quite slippery out there now. There's a fine mist coming down at the moment. Let's hope it doesn't get any worse. There's a few skyward glances going on in the pit lane. There's a bit of drizzle around. We'll have to make his move soon. This is the penultimate lap. A few drops of light rain are hitting the track. But it shouldn't be a problem if it stays like this. It's not quite a shower at the moment, but it's certainly rain I can see coming down. This track is dry as a bone and it should provide excellent grip. It's a fine day now. Let's hope it stays that way. There'll be no complaints from the teams about the weather at the moment. Good racing conditions. There's not even a hint of moisture on the circuit at the moment. The drivers will certainly be thankful for the dry conditions. The track is very wet now. Let's hope the drivers use some common sense in these conditions. Anyone who's still on slicks is going to have problems. That track is very wet now. There are several places around the course where I can see water collecting. Let's hope it doesn't cause any serious problems. Only one more lap for the spectators are either running for cover or hiding under their brollies. But there's no relief for the drivers out there at the moment. They'd better be careful. Those cars are kicking up an awful lot of spray now. The weather's certainly playing a big part in this race. Having to start from the pit lane is... He's going to start from the pit lane. Is currently on pole. Is provisionally in pole position. At the moment, sitting on pole is... So far, the best time has been set by... Setting the pace up to now. He's on pole at the moment, but can he hold on to it? As we enter the final lap, it's all up for grabs. Is provisionally on pole. But can he stay there? Provisionally on pole. It's looking good for... I wonder if anyone can better the time set by... Has set a great time. I doubt if anyone can knock him off pole. He's still in pole position. Still, pole position for... Seems unbeatable today. Can do no wrong, it seems. They're all trying and they're all failing. He's still on pole. Qualifying takes place on Saturday, the day before the race, when the drivers compete to establish the start grid order. This is the last lap. Each driver is entitled to 12 timed laps, which have to be completed in the one-hour session. The laps don't have to be consecutive, though. 
It's up to each driver when he goes out on the track. Often, the drivers will go out for two or three flying laps and then go back to the garage to watch their rivals progress on the overhead TV monitors. At the start of the session, nobody's ever very keen to be first on the track, but eventually one of them just can't bear the tension any longer and makes a move. Out laps when the car comes out of the pits and in laps when they go back in again count as part of the 12. As the driver sits in the garage concentrating his mind on the job ahead, there's often a frenzy of activity from the mechanics tweaking the car to get the best out of it. Some of the drivers are in the habit of putting in a few laps at the very end of the session. As long as they cross the start and finish line before the 60 minutes is up, then that lap will count. The 107% rule is there to weed out drivers that are so slow that, for whatever reason, they might be a danger on the track. No one is allowed to race if their best time is more than 107% of that of the driver in pole position. Here goes, comes roaring out of the pit lane. The final lap takes seventh. In sixth spot is out on the track. Is back out. What can we expect from? Show them what you can do. Tries again. Laps to go. More laps. He's got nine laps left. Now he's got eight laps left. Laps to come. Last lap has six more laps. Still has five laps. Laps still in hand. Only three more laps. Just two more laps to go. Entering his penultimate lap now. It's there for the taking. Now coming up to the penultimate lap. One more lap to go after this one. The last but one lap and it's all to play for. They'll be praying for a smooth penultimate lap. The last lap of as he enters the penultimate lap, it could be time to make his move on the leader. He's just got one more lap, has only one lap left. This is his last lap. Last lap for last chance. It's now or never for there's still quite a long time to go in this qualifying session. Well, we're halfway through the session. Time's running out in this session. This is the final lap of there's still 35 minutes of this session left. We're halfway through the qualifying session. Minutes left. The drivers have another 20 minutes to improve their grid position. Quarter of an hour left. There's 15 minutes left of this session. Three quarters of the qualifying time's gone now. Only 10 minutes left now. But that's plenty of time for someone to pinch pole. Just 10 minutes to go. There's only 10 minutes left. One, five minutes to go. Can someone surprise us? Not a lot of time left now. About five minutes. Only five minutes to go now in this session. Minutes remaining. Only four minutes left. Just the four minutes to go. Only three minutes remaining. There's only three minutes left, I'm afraid. With only three minutes to go, there's time for perhaps one more flying lap. Minutes until the end of qualifying. Two minutes left. Can he start one last flying lap? Just two minutes left now. Well, he's got about a minute to cross the start-finish line for one last timed lap. It's going to be close. There's only a minute left. Can he start one last desperate lap? No, I think it's too late. There's less than a minute left now. Under a minute to go. Oh, dear. He's run out of time. He's left that a bit late. The 60 minutes is all but gone. He's just having a look at the circuit, I think. Three. Won't be challenging for pole with that lap. Is still well off the pace. Not exactly setting the world on fire yet. Isn't working too well at the moment. Will be looking for a big improvement on that time. Well, that lap will disappoint. That's a bit better than the last one. There's signs of improvement now. Is starting to show what it can do. That's encouraging. Four. He's going much better now. That's more like it. That's a good lap from is going well now. A big improvement from that was a very fast lap. He's putting in some great laps now. Another very fast lap. Yes, he's going for it now. That was a very good lap from five. Puts in a really fast lap time. Will be delighted with that lap. A great lap from... He's doing some fantastic lap times now. A very fast lap, that one. Wow, look at that lap time. An incredible lap. 
That lap was unbelievable, right on the edge. Puts in an astonishing lap. Is flying. Six. A marvellous, marvellous lap from... Is absolutely flying round this circuit. A super lap from... And once again, a great lap from... Is going like stink. Well, we've seen better today. A good lap, but not his best. Maybe he's trying too hard. Has shown us that he can go quicker than that. We've seen better from... Seven. Is eighth. He's gone off the boil a bit. Well, that puts him in place. Place on the grid. He's in. That puts him up to... He moves up to... He's slipped down a place. That moves him up a place. Down he goes to row eight. Moves up to the second row. That's the second row for... He's on the front row. Goes to the front row. That's the front row for... He's on the front row. That's pole. Pole position. He's got it. It's pole position for... Grabs pole position. Nine. He snatched pole position. Is in pole position. That's pole position for... Too late. It's all over. Well, that's the end of today's session. Another fascinating qualifying session comes to an end. 12 laps and 60 minutes. That's all you get. That's qualifying over for this weekend. That's the end of today's excitement. Tomorrow, it's the real thing. Begins his flying lap. 10. Right. What can you do this time? He's about to start his flying lap. Starts on a flying lap. The start of a flying lap for approaches the line and it looks like he's staying out for another hot one. Is fully committed now. He must be doing another flying lap. He's gone past the pit lane entrance. It must be another flying lap. It looks like another flying lap for it's another flying lap. Is staying out for another flying lap. 11. He's on a flying lap. This traffic won't please him at all. Coming to the end of the lap. And this traffic looks like it could cause some problems for... Oh, no. It looks like he's going to hit some traffic. There's traffic ahead of him. Will they get in his way? He's going to have to deal with some slower cars on the track. Those slower cars could make life difficult for... There's some traffic ahead, but I don't think it'll affect this flying lap. Shouldn't be affected by the slower cars. They're far enough ahead. I don't think that traffic will affect... Oh, no. He's been bought by the traffic. 12. Oh, dear. He was really flying, but the traffic's ruined that lap. Was looking good on that lap, but there was just too much traffic. Oh, what a shame. The slower cars have spoiled that lap. For That was shaping up to be a great lap for... I'll be disappointed with that. It was going to be a very fast lap. The race leader is making a pit stop. Decides to make a pit stop while he's in the lead. Has the luxury of entering the pits in first place. Will want a very prompt pit stop to regain his impressive lead. Way out in the lead as he pulls into the pit lane. 13. As he enters the pit lane, he's lying. He pulls into the pits while he's in. He's in for fresh tyres and a little drink for the engine. Incredible! He's got back out without losing his place. Has managed to get back on track without losing a place. Very impressive. He's back on the track without dropping a place. Has kept his race position thanks to a very quick pit stop. That pit stop's cost him a place. Lost a place with that pit stop. That pit stop has cost him a place. 14. Loses a place with that pit stop. He's lost a couple of places after that pit stop. Loses a couple of places with that stop. He's lost a couple of places after that pit stop. Loses a couple of places with that pit stop. Dropped three places while he was in the pits. Dropped three places while he was in the pits. Has lost four places with that pit stop. He's lost four places after the pit stop. Lost four places during that pit stop. 15. He's lost four places in the pits. Oh, dear. That's five places he dropped there. Lost five places with that pit stop. Oh, dear. He dropped five places there. Lost five places with that pit stop. Well, he slipped right down the field after that pit stop. Will be furious. He dropped a fistful of places while he was in the pits. Teamwork. That's what it's about. Unfortunately, that team isn't working today. Well, after that pit stop, he slipped right down the field. There's a blue flag. 16. He's being shown the blue flag. The marshals are blue flagging. 
is going to have to move out of the way. He's being shown the blue flag. It's a blue flag for gets the blue flag. He'll have to move over. The blue flags are out. The blue flags are out for the tail enders. The blue flag is being waved. That's a blue flag. Being shown the blue flag. 17 sits in ninth. Takes notice of the blue flag. Moves out of the way, obeying the blue flag. Is shown the blue flag. Doesn't often see a blue flag. That's the blues. He'll have to pull over now. The three cars bringing up the rear are shown the blue flag. There are the yellow flags. The yellow flags are out. There must be something on the track. Hang on. The marshals are showing the yellow flags. Someone must have come off or maybe there's some debris on the track. The yellow flags are out. 18. Oh, what's happened? The yellow flags are out. Something's happened ahead. The yellow flags are out. The yellow flags are still out and the cars are all bunching up. Good news if you were trailing at the back, but a bit of a problem if you'd opened up any sort of a gap. They're still lapping under yellow flags. No overtaking allowed at the moment, obviously. Still, the marshals wave those yellow flags. That's the yellows. Finally, the yellow flags are out. I'm glad they finally spotted the obstruction. The marshals are waving the yellows. They must have seen something that we haven't. They will keep the yellow flags out until the debris has been removed from the track. Something's happened. The yellow flags are out. 19. I don't know what's brought out the yellows. We'll find out soon enough. Everyone has taken note of the yellow flags. They've all slowed down for the yellows and the backmarkers have had a chance to get back into the race. The red flags are out. It's a red flag. They're stopping the race. Oh no, the race has been stopped. The red flags are out. This is terrible. I expect the race will be stopped. Yes, there are the red flags. Now, will they stop the race? I can't see any red flags. It's fairly serious, but I doubt if they'll stop the race. Hang on, hang on, they are stopping it. There are the red flags. The race must surely be stopped. It's far too dangerous to race out there. 20. We've got the red flag. Stop the race. The red flag is out. What's happened? The red flags are out. We were expecting to see the red flags, and here they are. Surely we'll see the red flags now. This race must be stopped. I thought it would continue, but to be safe, they've got the red flags out. That's red. The race has been stopped. To be safe, they've stopped the race. We're going to see the red flag any second now. Yes, as I thought, the marshal produces the red flag. 21. The drivers are all closing up now as they wait for the green flag, which will signal that they can start racing again. They're still not allowed to overtake. Not until they see the green flags. The drivers will be getting itchy trigger fingers now, waiting for the green flag. The track's clear now, and it won't be long till the race is back on. We're just waiting for the marshals to wave their green flags. Still no green flag. I, I can't see what the hold-up is. I think it must be safe now. We can expect the green light any minute. They're about to put on the green light. The drivers will be as impatient as us. They can't wait to see the welcome sight of the green light. It's green, and it's go again for the... There's the green. 22. The green flags. The race is back on. At last, the marshals wave their green flags and we can get back to racing. There's a welcome sight for us all. The marshals waving their green flags. The green flags are out and the drivers waste no time getting back up to racing speed. The green light is on. This is the one they've been waiting for. The green flag is out. This is the one they've all been waiting for. We race on. We've got the green light. At last, they can overtake. The green light is on. It's green, and the 1999 Grand Prix is underway again here in green. 23. Green means go. We've got action once more here at No More Hanging Around. The green is on, and the race is underway again. The green flag must be a welcome sight for the drivers. After an unexpected break, the green light is on and the action has started again. A black flag for... There's a black flag. Who's it for? Who's it for? I can't see who it's for yet. Oh no, he's got the black flag. The black flag. It's... He's been black flagged. Unbelievable. Mind you, I'm not surprised. I don't know about the black flag. He should get the black spot after that terrible bit of driving. 24. I don't know about the black flag. He should get the black spot after that terrible driving. Bad news for someone as the black flag is waved. Now who's got it? 
hey, it's, they're waving a black flag and it looks like it's for a black flag. If you ask me, he deserved that, deserved to see the black flag. I'm only surprised it didn't come out earlier. He was asking for that. I'm only surprised the black flag wasn't shown earlier. Just got black flagged. Out goes the safety car. There's the safety car going out onto the track. The safety car will give them time to clear up the track and restart the race. 25. The safety car is out. Thank heavens the race hasn't been stopped. Here comes the safety car. The safety car is joining the track. This safety car is going to give them time to clear up the mess and then restart the race. Well, I'm glad the race hasn't been stopped. They've sent out the safety car. These cars have got to keep the heat in their tyres. That's why they weave from side to side to keep up the tyre temperature. They've got to be careful here. They don't want to drive over any of the debris and risk damaging their tyres. Now you can see the field closing right up and forming a line behind the safety car. The safety car is still out. It's not coming in yet. It's important they don't let their tyres go cold. That's why they're weaving from side to side and squirting the throttle to try to keep tyre temperature up a little bit. 26. They've got to be really careful now. You can't risk driving over any of the debris. That carbon fibre can damage the tyres. The field is closing right up in formation behind the safety car. The safety car's still out. No sign of it coming in yet. When those lights on top of the safety car go out, we'll know it's coming in on the next lap. Lights off. Safety car into the pit lane next lap. The safety car is in at the end of this lap. We're looking for the lights on top of the safety car to go out. Then we'll know it's coming in on the next lap. The lights go out. The safety car will pit at the end of this lap. The safety car will go in at the end of this lap. The race is on. There goes the safety car. 27. We'll start 10th. Into the pit lane goes the safety car. And the race goes on. The safety car is off. The race is back on. There goes the safety car into the pit lane. The race is back on. There goes the safety car. The race is back on. The safety car goes into the pit lane and the race carries on. The safety car is off and we're back to the race. In he comes, crawling slowly down the pit lane to retire. He's pulling off into the pits and I don't think he'll be back out today. He's pulling off into the pits. I don't think he'll be back out today. Sadly, pulls into the pits. 28. Oh, dear. He's parking up at the side of the track. It looks like the race is over for... He's pulling over to the side of the track. Retires. Well, here he comes to retire, chugging down the pit lane. He's into the pits and I don't think he'll be back out again. Pulls into the pits, cursing his bad luck. Oh dear, he's parking up. The race is over for his pulling off the track. 29. Calls it a day. Unfortunately, he won't take any further part in this race. What a great effort. And it's a shame to see it end like this. What a shame it's got to end like this. Well, that's a real shame for... He's going to be very disappointed with that. He won't take any further part in this race. It's a shame to see it end this way. Well, that's disappointing for... He's going to be very disappointed. 30. He gets out of the car. He's not happy at all. He's getting out of the car now. He's climbing out of his car. You can see his frustration as he climbs out. He's getting out of the car. He's getting out of the car. That's it for today. Something's wrong. There's smoke billowing out of the back of... There's actually flames leaping out from behind the driver. There's an enormous plume of smoke behind... Look at the smoke coming out of his car. 31. He seems to be losing oil from the back of his car. Oh dear, that looks like a major engine failure. He's lost that engine. That'll become a coffee table because there's nothing else you can do with it. There's his engine letting go in the biggest possible way. Another coffee table for somebody. I think I can see some damage to the rear wing. The rear wing has completely disappeared. He's lost his front wing. Has some steering trouble, I think. There's something wrong with the steering. On I think he's got problems with his steering. 32. It looks as though he's bent a steering arm. Some damage, I think, to the front right suspension. The right front suspension is definitely damaged. It looks as though he's totally wrecked his front right suspension. He's got some problems with the front suspension on the left. Some major damage there to the front left suspension. He smashed the front wishbone on the left. 
The right rear suspension's been damaged, I think. I think he's bent his rear suspension on the left. That rear suspension looks a bit suspect to me. 33. Big problems with the rear suspension of... Seems to have sustained quite a lot of damage to the rear suspension. Oh, dear, he smashed his rear suspension. Doing some real damage to his rear suspension got major suspension damage. A lot of damage there to the front suspension on smoke pouring out of the back of his car. This engine is too young to smoke, don't you think? Well, there's obviously a problem there. A shower of sparks coming out from behind him. Showering the track with sparks. 34. Was that smoke? Yes, his car, definitely on fire. It looks like his car's on fire. Major drama now, flames leaping out of the engine bay. Oh no, he's on fire. Little barbecue there, but there's no problem. They can soon put it out. He's a bit out of shape on the corners. Maybe a tyre problem. Judging by the car's handling, I'd say he's probably got a problem with tyres. From the look of the car's handling, I'd say he's got a tyre problem. His tyres are possibly worn, even blistered. Either way, it's something I'm sure is going to mean a trip to the pits. His tyres look to be worn, maybe even blistered. Either way, I think he's coming into the pits. 35. He could have flat-spotted his tyres when he locked up under braking. This track isn't normally too hard on tyres. Tyre wear is always a problem here. This circuit always poses tyre wear problems. His lap times are getting steadily slower. Maybe his tyres are getting worn. I wonder if new tyres would help. He's about ready for new tyres, I think. Well, it looks as though he's taken a hit somewhere because there's some obvious damage to the front of the car. The car's showing signs of damage on the left side. The right side of the car's been damaged. 36. Well, there's obvious bodywork damage there, but he should be able to carry on. These cars are really tough these days. The car is damaged, but I think he'll carry on. Surely that damage will put him out of the race. That amount of crash damage must surely mean the end of the race for... He's left bits of the car all round the track. He must think he's in a destruction derby, not Formula One. That car is a write-off, I think. There's no way he can carry on with all that damage, surely. There goes his no-claims bonus. 37 is 11th. It looks like he just made contact with... Just making contact there. Gets a bit of a scrape down the side. Gives him a really good whack on the side pod. Did the tyres make contact there? That looked like the tyres touched. There was a bit of rubber on rubber contact, I think. I think he made tyre contact with... Just brushing tyres with... Oh, heavy tyre contact there. 38. Luckily, he didn't ride up the wheels of the other car. This is the big danger of open wheel racing. Tire contact. That's the most likely way of getting these cars airborne. Look at that. He's just ridden up over the wheel of the... The wheels touched, flicking him up into the air. That could have been very nasty. Pulls into the garage. He's livid. He's gone straight into the garage. He's driven into the garage and out of the race. All four wheels are off. Here come the replacements. New wheels and tyres all round, please. 39. Four new tyres. On go the new tyres. Now, how much fuel are they putting in? Will they put enough fuel in to complete the race? In goes the refuelling nozzle. That hose weighs over 40 kilos and pumps fuel in at 12 litres per second. Quite a lot of fuel going in this time. Looks like they're going for a big fuel load. Not a lot of fuel on that stop. They haven't put very much fuel in at this stop. Off comes the damaged wing. 40. The broken wing is discarded. The old nose cone is off. It doesn't take long to remove the nose cone from these cars. The damage to the front wing means the car needs a new nose cone. On goes the new wing. Here's the new nose cone. The new wing's in place. Looks like they're ready to go. The nose cone's fixed. It looks like the crew is adjusting the wing settings. Oh no, he stalled the engine. 41. He stalled it. I don't believe it. He stalled again. Well, that's ruined the crew's hard work. The pit crew's body language says it all. If you're going to stall the car, do it in the pits. Well, I guess if you're going to stall the car, it's better to do it in the pits. It doesn't take too long to start the engine, but he's going to lose a few places, I think. That's going to ruin his race. All the hard work has been thrown away in that careless moment. 42. Off he goes at last. He gets away eventually. He'll be furious with himself. 
He'll be disappointed with that. No, don't do that. Oh, no. It's the... Look at that. It's... Yes. 43. No. I don't believe what I'm seeing. Incredible. Get out of the way. The refueler seems to be having trouble with the nozzle. He can't get the fuel nozzle to engage. The fuel pipe's stuck, I think. Oh, no. The fuel hose is stuck. This is costing a lot of time. Well, this is going to cost him dearly. 44. They're having trouble with one of the wheels. They can't get the wheel off. Oh no, the wheel nut's jammed. They're still struggling with that wheel. The wheel's off at last. They freed it now. They seem to be having trouble with the new wheel. I don't know why it's taking so long to put that wheel on. The old wheel came off okay, but they're having trouble with the new one. They've sorted it now. 45. At last, the wheel's in place. It was only a couple of seconds, but that delay could prove expensive. Over the start-finish line in top gear, quite a long straight here, heading down to turn one and two. The Jones and Brabham corners build up to 185 miles an hour. Keep the car on the left-hand side, pick a braking point and turn in. It's difficult to see this first corner. Use a bit of kerb. Often there's very good grip on the exit. Up to 180 miles an hour again now in top gear. Again on the left-hand side of the track, ready for turn three. Stamp on the brake pedal, three and a half G under deceleration and turn in. Just second gear, 50 miles an hour. Turn four now, short shift to third gear, just 85 miles an hour. Balance the throttle through the corner and now full power on the exit. Turn five, it's blind, 130 miles an hour. Nasty little twist on the end can catch you out. Past the Whiteford stand now, up to 175 miles an hour, heading towards turn six. The track falls away from you. Easy to lock your brakes under braking and turn in. Just 65 miles an hour. Up to 120 on the exit through Marina. Turn eight, louder. It's quite a tight right-hander, but you can stay full throttle normally. 160 miles an hour towards turns nine and ten, the Clark chicane. Keep the car on the left-hand side. A more open piece of track. You can see the apex. Brake very late, as late as you dare. Turn in, use a bit of kerb, and the track opens up on the exit. You can get on the power very early, 110 miles an hour through there. A long, curving back straight, heading towards weight, turns 11 and 12. Arrive at 180, flick down a couple of gears, and just scream through the first part, over the kerb a little bit. Second part, turn 12 is much tighter, 125 miles an hour. Mind the kerb on the exit. 46. Top speed again, 180 miles an hour. Top gear, turn 13. It's called Ascari. Very, very deep on the brakes. It's a 90-degree right-hander. Be careful. A short straight now to turn 14. Stewart up to 135 miles an hour. Stay in fourth gear. Just let the corner take you down to about 100 and hard on the power. Turn 15. You're near the end of the lap now. The slowest on the circuit, just 45 miles an hour. First, maybe second gear. The wheels will spin on the exit. Last corner. A difficult right-hander. About 95 miles an hour. Probably third gear. 16. It's called Prost. You need a good slingshot out of here to make a new fast lap. Over the start-finish line, check your pit board. Take the information. You're heading towards Nord... Nord <clears throat> Over the start-finish line, check your pit board. Take the information, but keep an eye on the Nord curve. First turn, 180 miles an hour as you enter in top gear. Flick down a couple and keep a tight line on the inside, 110 miles an hour through the exit. Bumpy there, but you can go full throttle and head out into the country. Top speed around 210 miles an hour. The Jim Clark chicane, hard on the brakes. You can brake much later there than you imagined. 3.3 G deceleration, just second gear, around 60 miles an hour. Bumpy on the exit. Takes a while before you can go full power. After yet another long straight, here you are at the Oss curve. Well over 200 miles an hour again. Brake, keep the car in a straight line if you can. Moves around on the bumps, just 55 miles an hour, probably second gear now. Over the curbs, the car will jump. Now you can go full throttle all the way through the OS curve. On the exit, be careful of the grass. Yet another long straight. Now you're looking at the Ayrton Senna curve, over 200 miles an hour again. Brake once again in a straight line, turning a little early now. There's good grip on the inside, but the curbs can make the car jump. Be patient now. Squeeze the throttle and get a good clean exit for good straight line speed. You're heading towards the stadium. Over 200 miles an hour again as you approach the stadium section, the Ajip curb. Brake the car down to 115 miles an hour, probably fourth gear. 
And you can power on early through the exit, jump across the curb, and a short straight to Saks. Saks hairpin. A lot of camber here. Normally very good grip. Don't go in too deep. Just 55 miles an hour second gear. Power on early, but smoothly. 47 sits on 12th. Through the chicane. 135 miles an hour. The track falls away from you. Into Sud Curve, 90 miles an hour. Be patient, the back end of the car can slide. Very easy to run wide here. Last corner, heading into the pit straight. Around 85 miles an hour. Good camber, but never quite seems to have the grip you expect. You need a good slingshot. You're into a new lap. Over the start-finish line, this is a short pit straight, and you immediately notice the track is falling away towards Turn 1. Into Turn 1, braking is difficult, track still moving downhill, it's bumpy, it's slippery, stay to the inside if you can. 80 miles an hour through the middle of Turn 1, and the camber helps you a little bit, accelerate in a short straight towards 2. Heading into 2, braking slightly downhill, 135 miles an hour on the way in, brake down to just 60 miles an hour. Have to be patient on the throttle, not much rear end grip here. Short straight into 3, get brave now, around 4th gear, 110 miles an hour. Try not to lift the throttle too much, but mind the kerb on the left hand side on the exit. Heading uphill towards turn 4, 170 miles an hour, but it's a blind crest. Be smooth and committed on the way in. Take the right line and you'll have a good clean exit. Slingshot into 5, 140 miles an hour. Just brake gently down to 80. Around third gear. Takes forever before you can get on the throttle. It's a long, long corner. Be careful. 48. This is a good part. Into the back straight up to 140. Look for that little chicane ahead. Brake late. 3G deceleration and flick flack the car through 55 miles an hour. Accelerate hard. Turn 8. Easy to overcommit through here because turn 9 follows very shortly. Through 9, 85 miles an hour, slippery on the exit, easy to spin off, but you're okay. Head towards 10. With good tyres and setup, you should get turn 10 flat out. Turn 11, the fastest on the circuit, 150 miles an hour, break down to 115. And be careful on the left-hand side of the track, but you must be fully committed through there as the track moves downhill again. 12, 150 miles an hour on the entry, track falls away from you. Just zigzag through the chicane, using the kerb on the left on the exit, a great feeling. Into turn 13, a good overtaking opportunity if you're the last of the late breakers. Easy to go past the breaking point though and run wide. Exit turn 13 at 55 miles an hour and a short, bumpy straight passing the pit lane entry into 14. Turn 14, arrive at 120, break down to 75. Again, you have to wait a long time before you can get on the power. As you do, hopefully you'll be pointing the right way and looking once again at the pit straight. Over the start finish line now, a very short pit straight heading towards La Source, around 170 miles an hour before you break down to just 40 miles an hour. The slowest corner easily. Turn in early, follow the wall around. Now get on the power as soon as possible, letting the car run wide using all the track available. 49. Screaming downhill now at about 180 miles an hour. Get ready. Don't be too tense. Eau Rouge ahead of you. Are you going to lift the throttle? Try not to. Go through there flat out if the car is working well. Over the top, still doing 170 through Radion. What a feeling. A long climbing straight brings you at just under 200 miles an hour into Le Coombe. Lots of grip here, right, left and right through Malmody, around 135 miles an hour average through the lot. Have fun. Downhill now towards Rivage. Difficult to break here, easy to lock your wheels and run past the entry point, just 60 miles an hour. Exit of Rivage, be careful, don't get on the power too early. A good 90 degree left-hander ahead of you, try to be smooth and keep as much speed as possible. Cascading downhill now at 160 miles an hour. Pouin, a double apex left-hander, long, long corner, can hurt your tyres and definitely hurt your neck. A short straight to Fania up to 170 miles an hour. Brake 3.5G in here. Hard, hard on that middle pedal. Turn in about a 90 miles an hour through the apex, right and left. Good grip. Use the kerbs if you have to. Short straight. You're now heading back towards the old circuit and Stavolo. A little right-hander, first of all, at about 80 miles an hour. Try and be smooth, try not to attack it too much, then Stavolo, what a great corner. About 160 there through the entry, and lots and lots of grip. You must take good speed through there, you've got a long straight now towards the end of the lap. Did I say straight? Well, it is flat out, but you've got some left-hand kinks. And Blanchiment, at 190 miles an hour, you should not have to lift the throttle if you're working well today. 
What a great feeling as you head towards the bus stop. 195 miles an hour, the biggest stop of the lap now, down to just second gear, around 45 miles an hour into the bus stop. A left, you tend to move out of the racetrack, and then you feel if you're moving back on it again, you should be flat out through the exit, over the curbs, and heading into a new lap. A long, long pit straight greets you as you head down towards the Retifilio chicanes. 215 miles an hour in top gear, break hard down to just 55, around second gear. Now don't accelerate too hard, the back end of the car will slide and take the curbs on the way out, 85 miles an hour. Good speed there, takes you well through the Curva Grande. 50. Curva Grande, 190 miles an hour, but easily flat out in a Formula One car. 200 miles an hour again as you head down to the Variante della Roggia. Easy to see the corner, not much runoff ahead of you. Break late, be brave, and get on the power as soon as possible. Two great corners ahead, the two Lesmos. The first one arrive at 160 miles an hour, come down to third gear around 95. Good camber here, stay down. You get more grip on the inside and slingshot towards Lesmo 2. 155 miles an hour before braking down again. Third gear around 95. Try to be smooth through here. Don't attack it too much on the way in. Get on the power early for the exit. You've just been under the old circuit. You're doing well over 200 miles an hour, and you're looking at the Variante Ascari. Brake late, carry a lot of speed through the first part, about 100 miles an hour if you can. Use the curb on the left on the way in. Now be smooth. Don't use the curbs on the exit, and just keep accelerating. If you can get it flat out all the way through there, maximum throttle, you'll take good speed towards Curva Parabolica. Parabolica ahead of you now. Over 200 miles an hour again, top gear tighter on the way in than it is on the exit so you have to come down to about 100 on the first part of the turn in and then you're progressively accelerating all the way through to 175 miles an hour exit and again that long pit straight ahead of you a relatively short pit straight dropping downhill towards the castrol s 185 on the entry break down hard to 80 miles an hour looks easy but you really do have to take a clean line through here third gear 105 miles an hour on the exit Plenty of grip there. A short straight, 170 miles an hour top speed. A fast left, 110 miles an hour before arriving at the Ford curve. Don't brake too late. Try to stay off the brake pedal a little bit and carry the speed through, around 65 miles an hour. Pouring downhill towards the Dunlop hairpin. Lots and lots of grip. Brake hard, turn in early. Keep the car on the inside. Get on the throttle as hard as you can, as early as you can, and you're heading uphill. A fast left-right chicane, 155 miles an hour. Normally plenty of grip, but don't run wide, you'll be in trouble. Still building speed, 175 miles an hour before you break into the RTL curve. Just 95 miles an hour, lots of grip. The camber of the circuit helps you here and let the car run up high and wide. But bring it quickly over to the left-hand side for the bit curve, 105 miles an hour. Once again, don't break too hard. Balance the throttle. Try to carry lots of speed. 51. Heading downhill now through the ITT curve. Easily flat out, full throttle in a Formula One car. And now uphill once again to the VDOL S. Much tightened, 180 miles an hour entry, break down to just 60 miles an hour in second gear. Flick flack through the VDOL S, but get on the power early. There's plenty of room on the exit. Into Coca Cola curve, 135 miles an hour before breaking down to 70. Frustrating corner. You seem to have to wait a long time before you can get on the power, but then there's good grip on the exit. Don't be frightened of going over that curb on the left. Heading into the pit straight for a new lap. Past the pit lane, over the start-finish line. Track is very much heading downhill. You build speed quickly up to 190 into the first curve. Use the entry as a deceleration zone to about 140 before slowing a second time down to 95, probably third gear. Lots of banking here in first curve. You can get on the power early and get a slingshot out towards the S. The S curve is a frenzy. You just keep building up speed. Left, right, left. It's great, around 130 miles an hour through most of it, but be very accurate. Don't be frightened of the curbs, but do not run wide. You'll be out of line for the next corner. Over the blind crest into the final part of the S. Feels a bit clumsy in here, 100 miles an hour in the bottom of the hill. The car seems to bottom out, be very heavy, and doesn't want to climb up through the Dunlop curve. Dunlop, 135 miles an hour, uphill blind, a never-ending left-hander. That leads you to Degna, 175 on the way in, break down to 115. Blind crest, don't break too hard, don't accelerate too hard on the exit. Degna 2, 135 on the way in. 
just 75 on the exit, a 90 degree right hander, bumpy and use the curb on the left. Stay left under the crossover, you're heading towards the hairpin. Through the blind right into the hairpin, 160 miles an hour down to just 40. First or second gear, stay inside, get on the power early. A long sweeping right hander brings you to spoon curve at 180 miles an hour. Brush the brake pedal down to third, around 100, and let the car run out to the right and wide. Bring it in slightly early for the second part of spoon, 125 miles an hour. The speed will decay to around 90. Don't be too aggressive here with the throttle. You need to get on the power early and smoothly to head along the back straight. Heading into 130R, 195 miles an hour. Try not to lift the throttle too much. Keep to around 160 through the apex. It just looks like a cul-de-sac of walls and tyres. What a great feeling if you get it right. 52. A short straight, 175 miles an hour. Heading into the Casio Triangle. Brake very, very late. There's a lot of grip down to 40 miles an hour. Take a little bit of curb on each side and get on the power as early as possible, but the wheels may spin. A good run out of Casio takes you over the start finish line for another lap of this great circuit. The long pit straight takes you uphill towards the Castrol curve, around 180 miles an hour, breaking down to second gear, around 45. Stay inside, use the curb, don't be too anxious. Another long straight taking you uphill towards the countryside now and the Remus curve. Another slow corner at the end, second gear, just 40 miles an hour. A blind right-hander with a crest right on the apex. A shorter straight now takes you towards the Gosser curve at 180 miles an hour, breaking downhill. Always be careful there. Down to second gear, just over 50 miles an hour. Turn in early, stay inside and accelerate hard. A long sweeping right-hander takes you into the Nicky Lauda curve, 160 on the way in, just under 100 on the way through. Be smooth and precise. A similar corner now with the Power Horse curve. 140 on the way in, 110 through the middle with a nasty right on the exit. 135 through there. Once again, be smooth and committed. A short straight takes you to the Jochen Rint curve. Arrive at 180. It's tricky. It's downhill, off camber, bumpy. You can easily run wide. If you survive that, you're into the final corner, the A1 curve. Got a nasty little turn in it. 145 on the way in, but just 95 through the middle. Again, get on the power early, and you'll be once again into the pit straight. Heading into the final part of the pit straight, it seems like you're going into a tunnel. The pit wall on the left, a concrete wall on the right, and the first corner you can't even see. You're staring at the grandstands. Curva 1. 53. Drop downhill, just 60 miles an hour, and immediately the right of the Senna S, just 85 miles an hour. The long, long turn 3, Curva du Sol, 135 miles an hour through the middle, and accelerate hard down the back straight. Turn 4, Decida de Largo, 185 on the way in. The track tends to fall away from you, just 80 miles an hour, not as fast as it seems. Turn 5 is absolutely full throttle, especially on slick racing tyres, 145 miles an hour, head towards Ferradura. One of the trickiest now, Ferradura, arrive at 175 miles an hour, brush the brake pedal, come down a couple of gears and disappear over the top of the blind crest, powering on early, but be careful of the back end. Turn 8 now, Laranca. About 140 on the way in, brake down very hard to just 45 miles an hour, probably first gear. A lot of camber helps you on the way out, but you immediately swap into Pinarino. Turn 9, Pinarino. Again, just 55 miles an hour. Don't be too anxious on the throttle. Keep the car down low and catapult out. Heading uphill now towards turn 10, Bica de Pato. Brake hard, brake in a straight line, and turn in. The grippers on the inside, and let the car run a little bit higher on the exit, just 45 through the apex. Get a grip of yourself now. You're heading downhill, turn 11, Mergulo, just 120 miles an hour, but the track is falling away from you, and it's bumpy. Brake in a straight line, uphill for Young Cow. Try to be smooth, carry as much speed as you can. You're not going to lift off again now in this lap. 54. A couple of tricky left, Subido de Box. Do not lift the throttle, especially in the dry, and you're heading towards the end of another lap. Over the start finish line, under the bridge, you're heading towards Tamburello at 180 miles an hour. Brake hard and come down to third gear, just 65 miles an hour through the Tamburello chicane, but the exit is all full throttle. This brings you to the Villeneuve chicane, 170 on the way in, brake hard, down to third gear, just 85 miles an hour. It's bumpy, mind the kerb on the left. If you negotiate that, you're looking at Tozer. Tozer, 145 miles an hour on the way in, brake very hard, 3.2 G deceleration. Take a wide line in, clip the apex, let the car run out, 
and pointed uphill, hard on the throttle. Over the blind crest at 170 miles an hour, brings you into Piratella. It's banked, lots of grip, go for it. About 100 miles an hour in fourth gear. Cascading downhill towards Aqua Minerale, 165 miles an hour. It's a double apex corner. Brush the brake pedal through the first part and brake hard again. Turn the car into the hill, dig deep, press the throttle. You've got lots of grip. A short climbing straight towards Varianti Alta, 165 miles an hour on the way in. You can't really see those curbs. Be careful of them. Flick flack through, hard on the throttle, room on the exit, full power. Downhill once again to the two Rivatas, 185 miles an hour. But remember, brake a little bit earlier than normal. Don't be too clumsy through here. Be smooth, gentle, get on the power as you can. Second Rivats is immediately in front of you, just 75 miles an hour. Bring the car in early, over the kerb on the left, full throttle on the exit. A flat-out kink brings you to Varianti Bassa, the last corner. Don't blow it now, 170 miles an hour. Brake very hard, 3.4G deceleration. Turn in, use the kerbs, balance the throttle. Don't get on the power too early, you'll spin on the kerb. You're into a new lap. 55. The pit straight in Monaco is anything but straight. Turning to the right, you're heading towards Sandevod at 170 miles an hour. Guide the car between the barriers. Brake very late if you can, but not too hard. And take 90 miles an hour through. Mind the barrier on the left-hand side. Uphill now, through Beau Rivage, towards Massenet. Over the blind crest into Massenet, about 160. Hotel de Paris on your left. Follow the barrier on the left-hand side. Mind it juts out a little bit. Slow the car for a second time through Casino Square. Just 70 miles an hour on the apex. Car pops over the top of a hill, the back steps out under hard acceleration. You're catapulting towards Mirabeau. Mirabeau, downhill braking, about 150 miles an hour. It's bumpy. You must take the pavement on the inside, 75 miles an hour. Good grip on the exit. Accelerate hard and hurtle towards the Lowe's hairpin. Catapult out of Mirabeau towards the Grand Hotel hairpin. One of the slowest corners in the world. You've barely got enough steering lock, just 40 miles an hour. And immediately there's Portier. Across the pavement at 75 miles an hour. Now watch the barrier on the right-hand side. It's easy to knock. You're heading into the tunnel. Through the tunnel, your eyes take a little bit of time to adjust to the new light level, but do not lift the throttle. It's quite a turn in there, 165 miles an hour and 180 miles an hour before you've finished. 56. Breaking into the new chicane. It's bumpy. The back end of the car's all over the place. You think you're never going to stop. There's the barrier. Turn in across the curbs, hard on the throttle, 55 at the slowest, but it accelerates like a rocket. Towards to back, you're looking at the barriers now. You're doing 160 miles an hour. Watch that barrier on the left. Come down two gears, just about 100 miles an hour through there. It's a great feeling if you get it right. Now the swimming pool section, about 130 miles an hour. Stay in fourth gear. Look for those curbs. There they are. Left, right, go. A short straight towards the exit of the swimming pool. It's much tighter here. Brake hard, just 50 miles an hour. But thread just 50 miles an hour. Thread the car between the two barriers. Now accelerate hard towards Raskas. Up to 110 miles an hour. You're looking at the restaurant of Raskas. Brake gently, turning through the left-hander. Downshift. Don't go in too hard. You'll never turn right into the 40 mile an hour hairpin. Difficult to get traction on the way out. The wheels will spin. You're heading towards Anthony Noakes. The last corner, just 65 miles an hour. Balance the car, will slide. The track falls away from you. Do not hit the barrier on the left. You're into a new lap. The long, long pit straight takes you up and down, gently rolling hills, and finally towards the Elf chicane. The long, long pit straight takes you up and down, gently rolling hills, and finally towards the Elf chicane. Loads of grip brake very late from 190 miles an hour in top gear down to probably third gear, and take a bit of curb on the inside. You must be accurate through here. Again, clip the curb on the left and let the car run a little wide. 57 is in 13th place. Accelerate hard up the hill, about 120 miles an hour through Renault. It's a never-ending right-hander. You turn a full 180 degrees, still all the time trying to accelerate. Be careful not to run out of road. Finally, you're doing about 170 miles an hour as you head into Repsol, turn four. Brake very, very hard. The slowest part is on the way in, 75, and immediately you can get on the throttle. It's a long, sweeping right-hander through the exit. Quickly falling downhill up to 150 miles an hour. Brake hard for five. Sayat. It's a slow corner. Be patient. Get on the throttle too early and you'll slide wide. A full throttle kink brings you into Verth. An uphill left-hander at 80 miles an hour. You need to be accurate, but fully committed through here. Uphill towards the blind camps a corner, 150 miles an hour as you enter. 
120 as you go through. Where is the corner? Be careful on the exit. A short straight brings you to La Caxa. 185 miles an hour on the entry. Break very, very hard and stay inside now. All the grippers on the inside, but you have incredible acceleration. Don't go too hard into Bank Sabadell. 130 on the way in, around 80 on the way through. Third gear. Strange bumps through here. You really do have to be cautious with the throttle, but get on it as early as you can. Grit your teeth now. Two very fast corners to end. The first one at 135 miles an hour and accelerating. The second one at 160 miles an hour. You can't see the exit. It wrenches your head off of your shoulders. Fantastic corner. You're looking at the pit straight once again. The pit straight has a gentle kink into the centre hairpin. 180 miles an hour, break down and take a quick left before braking hard again, just 60 miles an hour, then down to 40 for that hairpin. Let the car run wide, accelerate hard. On the exit, you can build up to 150 before turn three. Turn three and four, a nasty little right-left chicane, 75 miles an hour. But the road is off camber. Mind the wall on the right-hand side. 58. Turn five, not quite flat out, this right-hand kink, unless the car's absolutely perfect. Chicane six and seven, Pont de la Concorde. Again, you can brake very late. Be careful on the way in. Take plenty of kerb. And the track opens up on the way out, so you can throttle on early. Up to 180 miles an hour once again under the bridge. Now you're looking at another right-left chicane. Very similar, tight on the way in, just 60 miles an hour. But opens up on the way out for full throttle. Another straight takes you up to 185 miles an hour before the casino hairpin. Break very, very hard down to first gear, 40 miles an hour. Be patient. Wait a little while. The tyres will spin if you accelerate too hard. And you're on your way. A long back straight takes you up to 190 miles an hour before a huge stop into the pit chicane. The pit lane straight ahead, but you take the right left. Plenty of grip on the exit. Run up close to the wall. You're into a new lap. You enter the pit straight very fast at Silverstone. Over the start finish line, you're heading towards Cops Corner at 180 miles an hour. But you can't see it around that barrier. Flick down just one gear, 145 miles an hour through the apex, but be careful not to run out of road on the exit. 180 miles an hour through the left-hander of maggots and really commit to the right-hander, 165 miles an hour. You may have to flick down one gear and get ready for that left. There it is, 125 miles an hour, Beckett's left, followed by a slightly slower right-hander, an important corner, you need every mile an hour through here that's possible. You've got hanger straight ahead of you. 190 miles an hour as you approach Stowe. Keep it on the left-hand side. It's a right-hander with a very late apex. So take a wide line through and then bring the car in. You're doing about 100 miles an hour. Over the little crest into Vale, 170 miles an hour. Brake late, but easy to lock your wheels and sail past the turning point, which is just 55 miles an hour. 59. You're immediately into club. Be careful in the beginning, but then the track opens out beautifully for full throttle and maximum acceleration. Climbing uphill now towards Abbey, 175 miles an hour before braking desperately late, just 65 miles an hour through the left. The right opens up, you can be full throttle. Over the hill towards Bridge, what a glorious corner. There it is, try not to lift the throttle, 150 miles an hour, but straight ahead of you is Priory. Priory, a deceptive corner, don't brake as much and go faster than you think. It's 100 miles an hour through there. And immediately you're into Brooklands. 55 miles an hour, don't attack it too much. Stay inside, get on the power smoothly. Stay in the middle of the track for Luffield. Through Luffield, follow the inside line, just 70 miles an hour. Don't get on the power too early. But as soon as you can, you're into Woodcut, which catapults you into that pit straight once again. A very slow entry into this pit lane, which is very short before you're into Grand Curb. 165 miles an hour, you shouldn't have to lift a throttle. Slightly downhill through a left-right, you've got Estoril Corner. A long, long, never-ending right-hander, the most important corner of the lap. 110 miles an hour through the middle, fourth gear. You can power on early and smoothly all the way through the exit. A longish back straight with a right kink before you're doing 180 miles an hour at the end and a desperately late braking into Adelaide hairpin. 3.8G deceleration, just 35 miles an hour, second gear, probably first even. Power on from the middle of Adelaide hairpin. You're heading towards Nürburgring. Up to 175 miles an hour, but you've got to be smooth, you've got to be accurate. You're going to go through Nürburgring chicane at 110 miles an hour. A bit of room to move on the exit. 60. Up to 160 before you turn in early to the 180 degree corner. And just follow the inside line, take a little bit of curb and be patient. A right curve now, but should be easily flat out around 140 miles an hour. A short straight to Imola. 
This time the chicane falls away from you, 170 on the way in, 110 through the middle, and it always surprises you when you get there. Try to stay a little bit left on the exit of Imola and be ready for Chateau Doe, a tricky right-hander taking around 60 miles an hour. If you get on the power early at Chateau Doe, you simply scream downhill towards the chicane, 140 miles an hour, but you can't see that chicane. You can just catch a glimpse of the curbs, 60 on the way through, easy to get caught out there. A short stab on the throttle, 80 miles an hour, break down hard into Lise, just 40 miles an hour, probably first gear, Get on the power as soon as you can. You're over the start-finish line into a new lap. A long pit straight past the pit buildings of this magnificent new circuit, up to 190 miles an hour as you head down. A long pit straight past the pit buildings on this magnificent new circuit as you build up to 190 miles an hour before turn one. Turn one, a long, long right-hander, around 80 miles an hour, third gear, building speed, but quickly into turn two. 61. A smooth radius, break down gently, 60 miles an hour at the slowest point, but it opens up on the exit and you're heading along to turn three. A very long right-hander in turn three, about 160 miles an hour, should be easily full throttle, plenty of runoff area on the outside. A short straight now towards turn four, break down very, very hard, around 70 miles an hour, it's a 90 degree right-hander. Good grip on the exit, hurtle towards five. A short straight takes you towards turn five, a long left-hander, be smooth, be precise and balance the throttle. You immediately blend into turn six. This is a flowing circuit, around 120 miles an hour, power on early for the exit. Another short straight takes you down to turn seven and eight. Treat it as one corner, apex early, run wide and apex a second time. Accelerate hard towards nine. A medium straight takes you up to 175 miles an hour before turn nine. The slowest corner on the circuit. Down to second gear, just 40 miles per hour. Turn 10 is a sweeping right-hander. Pretty easy in a Formula 1 car. You're towards 11. Around 70 miles an hour and third gear for turn 11. Again, the track is flowing. Power on early towards 12. Approaching 12 at about 160 miles an hour. It's a flowing left-hander. Flick down a couple of gears, around 100 miles an hour. 62. Turn 13 is a sweeping right-hander, taking it about 120 miles an hour, but leading you straight in to turn 14. Turn 14, a sharp right-hander, just second gear, around 60 miles an hour. A long straight follows. Important to take every extra mile an hour you can out of this corner. Up to 190 miles an hour again now, and you're in towards the last corner, turn 15. Brake very, very late. Apex somewhere in the middle. Get on the power. Let the car run out wide. Use all of the track available. You're into that long pit straight once again. I can't believe it. He's actually reversing on the track. That is suicidal. He's put it in reverse. He's actually reversing round the track. In all my years, I've never seen anything so stupid. He's driving like an idiot. You can't reverse during a race. Well, some people say he often races like he's going backwards, but now he's putting it into practice. He's going to have problems if he doesn't make a pit stop soon. Those tyres are wearing thin. He must be running low on fuel. He'll have to make a pit stop very soon. 63. He's desperate for some attention in the pits. Really needs some work in the pits. Isn't going to last much longer if he doesn't make a pit stop soon. Still hasn't made a pit stop. What is he thinking of? Just missed a blue flag. I can see it. You can see it. So why can't he see it? Pull over and let him pass. Why doesn't he obey the blue flag and pull over and let the faster car go by? That is bad sportsmanship. Has just ignored a black flag. What can he be thinking? Has just been black flagged, but he's ignoring it. Despite being black flagged, he's still driving round the circuit without a care in the world. 64. Well, there's something wrong. His lap times are right off the pace now, but he doesn't seem to want to go into the pits. Gearbox, maybe. He's still lapping, but not as quickly. Could be stuck in a gear. I wonder if he's got gearbox trouble. Doesn't seem to have all of its gears. I think maybe there's a hydraulic fault on is definitely struggling with his gears. Sounds like a gearbox problem for... Mika Hakkinen, David Coulthard, Michael Schumacher, 65, Rubens Barrichello, Heinz Harold Frenzen, Jarno Trulli, Eddie Irvine, Johnny Herbert, Ralph Schumacher, Jensen Button, Giancarlo Fisichella, Alexander Vert, John Alacy, 66, 
Nick Heidfeld, Pedro de Nitt, Mika Salo, Pedro de la Rosa, Jos Verstappen, Mark Janame, Gaston Mazzacani, Jacques Villeneuve, Ricardo Zonta, the McLaren, 67, takes 14th. The Ferrari, the Jordan, the Jaguar, the Williams, the Benetton, the Prost, the Sauber, the Arrows, the Minardi, the BAR, 68. The McLaren, the Ferrari, the Jordan, the Jaguar, the Williams, the Benetton, the Prost, the Sauber, the Arrows, the Minardi, 69. The BAR, he's looking for victory if he keeps this up. He's having the race of his life out there, surely looking at a win now. Well, I predict that he'll be taking the win, unless, of course, something goes wrong first. Not that I'd wish that on him. Has the look of a man on top of his form. Could well be on the podium. Looks like he's in for a share of the championship points at the very minimum. He's so far behind the pack that finishing will be an achievement in itself. Seems to be out of contention now. It doesn't look like a points finish for 70. He's well behind now. I think we can discount him from serious contention. No chance for him now. He'll be lucky to finish in the points. No points today for has settled into a rhythm. And he looks good for could be well in his grasp if he carries on at this speed. He's not going to make this easy for he's struggling to stay in front of he's just clipped the tyres. Just touching the tyres there, 71. Oh no, he slid into the tyres. He's into the tyre wall. A big impact with the tyre wall. He really ploughed into the tyres. The tyres are doing their job, saving him from a bad accident. Really hit those tyres hard. Ramming into the tyres there. He hit those tyres very hard. It could have been a lot worse if the tyres weren't there, though. He's just clipped the wall there. A glancing blow on the wall. 72. He's into the wall. That wall is very unforgiving. He's ricocheted off the wall. Just smashed into the wall. That looks as though he took a piece of the wall with him. Really hit the wall hard that time. Oh, that's a massive impact with the wall. He's really stuffed that car into the wall. Oh, he's clipped the barrier. He's into the barrier. 73. He's bounced off the armco, off the tarmac and into the scenery. Stuffs his car into the safety barrier. Oh, my goodness, he smashed that car into the barrier. Was that a bit of a nudge? I think those two cars may have touched just then. A very slight impact there. No harm done, it seems. Just getting a little close there. I think he just touched the car in front's gearbox there. He's trying to give the other car a shove. 74. Just a small impact there. I don't think any major damage was done there. Well, that impact could cost him dearly. He's had quite a big moment there. That shook him up a bit, making fairly heavy contact. Oh, that was a hefty shove from barging his way through. Barging his way through. Look at the way he's muscling through. 75. That was quite a bump. Oh, he's run into the back of the car in front. Whoa, straight into the back of him. He just drove into the back of the car in front. No attempt to avoid him. He just drove into the back of the car in front. No attempt to miss him. Oh, my goodness, he stuffed him right up the gearbox. Oh, no, a big impact there. Oh, he's had a big one. This is terrible. That car is a wreck. That looked like a very serious crash. 76. A sickening impact there, I'm afraid. Of course, these cars are very, very strong, but that looks rather serious. An enormous crash. Well, if that blown engine dropped any oil on the track, it's going to be treacherous. Oil on the track? is what most drivers dread most of all. If there's any oil being spilled, then it could get extremely dangerous. The marshals will be doing their best to clean up that oil spill. I think he spun on the oil spill before the marshals had time to warn him it was there. There's debris right across the track. The racing line is littered with debris. 77 starts in 15th. There are big lumps of broken racing car all over the place. I think they'll have to stop the race. There's debris all over the track. Even the smallest fragments of debris can be dangerous. Takes the checkered flag, but only just narrowly wins the race. They're wheel to wheel at the line. It's going to be close. Takes it. 
But that was very nearly a photo finish. There's barely a car's length between these two. It's neck and neck right up to the finish line. Takes the checkered flag just in front of 78. Worthy of a first place finish despite pressure from runner up. Very happy to see the checkered flag first. Finishes just in front of. That's an easy win for. One by an incredible margin. Really is leagues ahead of the rest of the field. We'll take the checkered flag with ease. We'll be very happy with that win. Here we are with cockpit view looks like this. This view gives you some idea of what it must be like in the driving seat. 79. This view gives you some idea of what it's like in the driving seat. Now we're riding with this camera view is alongside can see this view from his car. And now we're in car with... There's quite a debate in the paddock about whether he deserves to be in Formula One. Pretty short debate to my mind. If he carries on like this, he'll be lucky if all four wheels are pointing in the same direction at the end. Some terrible mistakes being made today. I feel like I've been watching the Dodgems rather than Formula One. He told me before the race he was struggling to find his rhythm. From the look of this performance, not even Phil Collins could help him today. Superman couldn't keep that pointing in the right direction. 80. There's always more grip on the black stuff than the green. The best way to get away in a Formula One car is like grandma leaving Tesco's. Just drive off. The most important bit of a Formula One car is always the nut holding the steering wheel. It's handling like a Morris Minor with 750 horsepower. It's got all the grip of a Morris Minor with 750 horsepower. Sometimes Grand Prix drivers look absolutely awesome and sometimes they look like they couldn't even drive sheep. And today is a sheep day. He seems to have completely lost his head. Don't lock the wheels. He did lock the wheels. There's some days he couldn't drive a nail into a piece of wood, and this looks like one of them. The amount of time he's spending on the grass, they should put some cutters underneath his car. 81. He's covered himself with more gravel than glory this year. Really, we're seeing a bit of amateur hour here. That was a clumsy passing attempt, to say the least. I think his brain is writing checks his talent can't cash. If they keep this up, the only one who'll finish will be the clown driving the pace car. Ambition often gets ahead of adhesion in this weather. He's in. Set of boots, lots of gas. Bye bye, see you later. It rattles the fillings in your teeth when you go over those sawtooth curbs. He's just squeezing the throttle as he comes out of the hairpins as if there was an egg underneath the pedal. Only two corners now till the end of the lap. Don't worry, plenty of time to crash yet. He's running rings around them today. Look, he's not even pushing hard. He's barely touching the curbs. 82. He's certainly on it today. Isn't it amusing to see who's really trying when it's contract renewal time? These things take off like a scolded cat. The engine sounds quiet on that one. He's giving it full bananas. If I could swap my microphone for a steering wheel for just one race, this would be it. The times always tumble here like a fruit machine as every lap you get a little bit braver. Looks like he got on the power too early and spun off onto the grass. Spins off onto the grass. He spun off. Another spin for 83. Oh dear, he spun off again. Spins off again. Oh, it's another spin. He spun that car again. Must have incredibly quick reactions to recover from that spin. Another bumpy ride over the grass. He's taking a shortcut over the grass. 84, 85, 86, 87. We'll start 16th. 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97 is 17th. 7th place for 98, 99, 100. This is lap, lap. We're on lap number. We're on lap. They're on lap, lap. He's completing lap number. Got 18th. He's completing lap, coming to the end of lap number, coming to the end of lap, laps completed. The start of lap number, the start of lap, he's just beginning lap number. He crosses the line to start lap, laps to go. Laps left, he's going 19th, laps left in this race.
Laps to the checkered flag. Laps to hold on for victory. Nail-biting laps. He's trying to outbreak. He's having a look at... He's closing the gap on... He's drawn level with... He's all over him like a bad suit. Just pulled off an astounding move. Starts 20th. He really does have those overtaking manoeuvres down to a fine art now. A fantastic move there by... That was a brave bit of overtaking and it certainly paid off for... Passes him as though he wasn't there. Great stuff. He hasn't managed it this time. He can't get past. Overtaking just wasn't on, I'm afraid. It would have been suicidal to overtake there. He realised he had no chance of getting past held his line, and he had to back off. He's 21st. He had to back off that time, having none of it. He's had the door closed on him, shuts the door, holds his line. He just didn't have the speed to get past. He didn't quite get a big enough toe. No chance of overtaking there. Isn't in the habit of giving away his track position. He still hasn't passed. Next to him is he just can't get past. He made a bit of a mess of that. He won't get past like that. No chance. I don't think so. A missed opportunity. He missed his chance to get past. He should have got him there. He won't get past like that. That was a clumsy passing attempt, to say the least. I think his brain is writing checks. His talent can't cash. In second place is just can't get past. A bit ambitious there. Thinks better of it. Not this time. I've said it before. If he didn't have bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. Oh, no. He's been overtaken by left him standing. Blasts past. Just manages to get past. He couldn't hold off. Is alongside on row one. He's dropped a place. That's just what he didn't want. He couldn't hold him back any longer. I don't think he even realised the other car was there. Nothing he could do about that. The start of the penultimate lap. This is the penultimate lap. We're on the penultimate lap now. Just one more lap after this one. The penultimate lap is second on the grid. He starts the last lap. The final lap is on the final lap. The last lap for last lap starts the last lap. Lap. This is lap. Lap number. Lap. Sitting in the third grid slot is we're on lap number we're on lap, they're on lap number, they're on lap, lap. First, second, third, fourth, fifth has secured third place. In eighth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth sits in third place. Sixteenth. 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th is 3rd, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, 32nd, 33rd, 34th, 35th, in 4th is 36th, 37th, 38th, 39th, 40th, 50th, 51st, 52nd, 53rd, 54th. Fourth position is 55th, 56th, 57th, 58th, 59th, 60th, 61st, 62nd, 63rd, 64th is 4th, 65th. 66th, 67th, 68th, 69th, 70th, 71st, 72nd, 73rd, 74th, takes 4th place, 75th, 76th, 77th, 78th, 79th, 80th, 81st, 82nd, 83rd, 84th. In pole position is 85th, 86th, 87th, 88th, 89th, 90th, 91st, 92nd, 93rd, 94th. At the front of the grid is 95th, 96th, 97th, 98th, 99th, 100th, penultimate, 
final, last, the Australian Grand Prix is on pole. The Brazilian Grand Prix, the San Marino Grand Prix, the British Grand Prix, the Spanish Grand Prix, the European Grand Prix, the Monaco Grand Prix, the Canadian Grand Prix, the French Grand Prix, the Austrian Grand Prix, the German Grand Prix is in pole position. Ninth position for the Hungarian Grand Prix, the Belgian Grand Prix, the Italian Grand Prix, the US Grand Prix, the Japanese Grand Prix, the Malaysian Grand Prix. Thank you for joining me, Murray Walker, bringing you live, uninterrupted commentary as it happens. Today, we're in Australia. The tension is mounting as you join us here for today's big race. The tension is mounting. You could cut the atmosphere with a cricket stump. Welcome to the race. For those of you not trackside today, I can assure you there's a marvellous atmosphere here at 22nd will be. You join us for what promises to be a remarkable weekend of Formula One racing here at Murray Walker here again. Let's hope this will be another fabulous race. I'm Murray Walker and welcome to Monaco. I make no secret of the fact that this is my favourite track. And for the drivers today, the stakes couldn't be higher. Welcome back, Formula One fans. I'm Murray Walker and I'll be bringing you live commentary from this superb circuit. 72 laps of 4.29 kilometres really tests the driver's capabilities. 62 laps of the 4.93 kilometres track is nail-biting stuff. The 6.97 kilometre circuit is lapped 44 times. This 5.77 kilometre Monza circuit is the fastest in Formula One. The Italian Grand Prix takes 53 laps. This brand new 4.2 kilometre layout at Indianapolis will see 73 laps of action before a winner's declared. The Sepang Formula One circuit is 5.54 kilometres long and the Grand Prix will be contested over 58 laps. Last of all will be 72 laps of 2.67 miles really tests the driver's capabilities. 62 laps of the 2.47 mile track is nail-biting stuff. The 4.33 mile circuit is lapped 44 times. This 3.6 mile Monza circuit is the fastest in Formula One. The Italian Grand Prix takes 53 laps. This brand new 2.55 mile layout at Indianapolis will see 73 laps of action before a winner's declared. The Sepang Formula One circuit is 3.33 miles long and the Grand Prix will be contested over 58 laps. Melbourne's Albert Park rightly calls itself a great place for the race. The track circles a lake and passes right through the city park. With its bumpy, dusty surface, the Interlagos circuit is tough on cars and tough on drivers. Formula One racing always comes alive here at Imola, the first European race of the season. We can expect crowds of 200,000 passionate tifosi crammed in on race day. The narrow, winding streets might make the going slow, but many of the drivers live here, so they certainly know their way round. There are very few runoff areas, so the slightest driver error can end in disaster. Last but not least, Catalonia has a fair share of long, constant radius corners, which together with an abrasive surface, make this track tough on tyres. But it's a firm favourite with a lot of the drivers. Situated on an island, this is one of the best Formula One tracks. With its long, high-speed straights, followed by chicanes, it's one of the hardest circuits of the year on brakes. Situated between Paris and Lyon, this newly resurfaced track certainly sees its fair share of the action. With such a slippery surface, the high and low speed corners need 100% driver concentration. This is one of the highlights of the Formula One calendar. The incredible atmosphere helped by the enthusiastic home fans. The mixture of fast and slow corners makes car setup difficult to get right. Hockenheim is a bit of a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It has two very different characters. 
Around the stadium complex, the corners are slow and tight. But most of the circuit is a series of fast straights punctuated by chicanes. The track is twisty, dusty and narrow. Since overtaking is difficult, a good starting position on the grid is vital. This fabulous country road winds through the Ardennes region of Belgium and offers some of the most challenging bends in motorsport. Despite a handful of demanding chicanes, Monza is the fastest track in Formula One. A win by Ferrari on home turf is going to send the spectators wild. A poor relation to the old Oesterreich ring on which it's based, the setting is beautiful. Although the track is tight, the racing is always exciting. Despite being considerably shorter and safer than it used to be, the Nürburgring is still steeped in history and tradition. Someone's got to start last. Today it's... This track is a real test of man and machine. With its figure of eight configuration and some awesome bends, it's a real driver's circuit. This track is a real test of man and machine. With its figure of eight configuration and some awesome bends, it's a real driver's circuit. Although the Indianapolis Grand Prix track borrows a sizable slice of the famous oval used in the Indy 500, the new design has enough twists and turns to provide a serious challenge to the Formula One veteran and novice alike. The lap records held by Heinz Harold Frensen. 1 minute 30.585 seconds in his Williams Renault in 1997, and that's before groove tyres. Eddie Irvine took his first Grand Prix win here in 1999, driving for Ferrari. Mika Hakkinen won his second consecutive Brazilian Grand Prix last season, but Villeneuve's 1 minute 18.397 seconds lap record from 1997 still stands. In the 1997 Williams, Heinz Harold Frensen set the fastest lap, 1 minute 25.531 seconds. Last year, Michael Schumacher went on to win at Imola after race leader Mika Hakkinen got it wrong on lap 17. Michael Schumacher broke his leg here last year, which stopped him from repeating his 1998 success. But he still holds the lap record of 1 minute 24.475 seconds. Last year's Grand Prix at Barcelona was all about McLaren versus Ferrari. Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard were first and second, with the fastest lap to Mika at 125.496 miles an hour. Michael Schumacher beat teammate Eddie Irvine to third place. The lap record of 1 minute 18.805 was put up by Heinz Harold Frensen in 1997 in his Williams Renault, although it was Canadian Jacques Villeneuve who won the race. The Nürburgring provided the Stuart Ford team with their first Grand Prix victory last year, with Johnny Herbert driving. Rubens Barrichello was a superb third in his Stuart, with Trulli in the Prost sandwiched in second place between the two Stuart drivers. It was a 1-2 and maximum points here for Ferrari last year. Despite Hakkinen beating Michael Schumacher's lap record with a best lap of 1 minute 22.259 seconds, he could only take third place in the McLaren Mercedes. And starting right at the back will be... Heinz Harold Frensen had a lucky escape from a nasty crash here in 1999 after a battle with Fisichella. The Italian went on to finish second. Mika Hakkinen had already sewn up a strange race after rival and pole position winner Michael Schumacher exited the track and the race on lap 29. With six home wins under his belt, Alain Prost is synonymous with this circuit. Although Nigel Mansell's held the lap record of 1 minute 17.070 since 1992. In 1999, Jordan's clever one-stop strategy paid off, as Heinz Harold Frensen took maximum points despite the weather and a storming drive from Hakkinen, who came from 14th on the grid, eventually to finish second. The lap record of 1 minute 11.814 seconds was set by Jacques Villeneuve in a Williams Renault in 1997. He went on to win the first ever Grand Prix held at this track. Eddie Irvine took the honours for Ferrari last year, 
although the race was notable for a collision between David Coulthard and teammate Mika Hakkinen, which cost the Finn dearly. After ending up near the back of the field, Hakkinen had a remarkable drive, and he eventually finished third behind Coulthard. A brilliant drive. David Coulthard clocked 1 minute 45.270 seconds in the McLaren for the lap record in 1998, but last year he could only finish fifth as Eddie Irvine and Mika Salo took all the glory for Ferrari. Nigel Mansell's Williams Renault 1992 lap record of 1 minute 18.308 remains unbeaten. In 1999, Mika Hakkinen led from start to finish in a race he had to win to keep Eddie Irvine at bay in the championship. Alain Prost's lap record of 1 minute 51.095 from 1993 still stands at Spa. In 1999, David Coulthard got past Hakkinen early on and managed to hold on to collect 10 points. The lap record of 1 minute 24.808 went to Mika Hakkinen in his McLaren Mercedes in 1997, although the race was won by teammate David Coulthard. In 1999, Hakkinen span off after leading for half the race. Heinz Harold Frensen went on to take the chequered flag first, despite late pressure from Ralph Schumacher in the Williams. In 1997, Michael Schumacher won the Japanese Grand Prix, but the fastest lap time of 1 minute 38.942 was put up by Heinz Harold Frensen in his Williams Renault. Current world champion Mika Hakkinen won here in both 1998 and 99. It was Ferrari who dominated the inaugural race at Sepang in 1999, despite being disqualified for a technical infringement. Fortunately, though, they were given a reprieve, and Eddie Irvine took first place thanks to a brilliant tactical race by Michael Schumacher, who just returned to racing following his injury at Silverstone. Schumi also set the lap record with a time of 1 minute 40.267 seconds. Starts 22nd. The sun's shining and it's a beautiful day for motor racing. It's baking hot out here today. What a wonderful day for motor racing. Conditions are perfect for motor racing today. There's a slight drizzle in the air, but hopefully it won't affect the racing. Light rain is falling, but so far the visibility is still good. The rain's turned the track into a skating rink. Rain is falling by the bucket load. These drivers will need 100% concentration in these awful conditions. There's a big black cloud overhead, but hopefully it won't rain. The pit crews are nervously staring at that big black cloud overhead. Hopefully, though, it'll hold off until after the race. Well, the sun's made an appearance and the track is drying out nicely. We'll have to start from the back of the grid. It's warming up now. It won't be long until the track's dried out completely. The row of lights come on one at a time. When all five are lit, there'll be a tension-filled pause. When the lights go out, the race begins. Wait for the lights to come up one at a time. Then hold your breath as they pause and then go off. Then it's Grand Prix, go, go, go. The lights come on one at a time, and when they're all on, there'll be a pause of up to three seconds. They'll go out, and that will signal the start of when all the lights are on, there'll be a pause of up to three seconds. They'll go out, and that will signal the start of the lights go up one at a time. There's a pause of up to three seconds. That's it, the start of the A1 ring. Buenos Aires, Catalonia, Hockenheim, Hakkinen, the Hungaro ring, Imola, Manicur, Melbourne, Monte Carlo, Montreal, Monza, the Nürburgring, Sao Paulo, Sepang, Coulthard, Silverstone, Spa Francochon, Spa, Suzuka, Albert Park, Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache, Autodromo Ciudad de Buenos Aires, 
Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, Interlagos. Oh dear, the heavens have opened and the conditions on the track are getting worse by the minute. Schumacher, 10th place for, he's completing lap number two. Coming to the end of lap number, coming to the end of lap, laps completed. The start of lap number, the start of lap, he's just beginning lap number. He crosses the line to start lap, laps to go, laps left. Barry Callow, laps left in this race, laps to the chequered flag, laps to hold on for victory. Leads, has the lead, out in front, is leading, leads the pack, shows them the way. The leader is Frensom. Way out front is at the front. We have out in front. Has the lead. Is way out in front. Leading the race is at the front is can anyone catch. Has the lead. Is second. Truly. Next is third place for followed by fourth is Next is, he's been standing up in the seat of that car all weekend, really driving the wheels off it. This is what I really wanted to talk about. I shouldn't really say that, but no, no, I won't say it. There it is. It's unbelievable. Irvine, the gap has stabilised. Indeed, it's increased a little. I'm so cautious about saying anything about him that I hardly dare say anything at all about him. If you haven't got your heart in your mouth, then you jolly well should have. I know I shouldn't speculate, so I will. This could very well end in tears. Are we seeing something dramatic here? Yes! Yes! No! I don't believe it! I think he's lost this race, unless, of course, he can storm back to win it. As long as he stays on the track, he's got every hope of staying on track. Herbert. The stamina of these drivers often amazes me, both physical and mental. It's only a short stretch down the long home straight. That could blow things wide open. And that could really blow the race wide open. It looks like he's about to encounter some traffic. He's about to get stuck in the traffic. The back markers are going to make this interesting. I'm not sure the back markers have seen him. I wonder if the back markers realise they're holding up. It's always interesting when the leaders get in amongst the back markers. Schumacher. He'll have to have his wits about him in this traffic. We'll be hoping to grab the advantage here. He'll be waiting to pounce on any hesitation by the leaders as he overtakes the tail enders. Can he stay in front through this traffic? Oh, good. The back markers let him through. He's making a real mess of the traffic. Is being held up dreadfully by the tail enders. He's losing all his advantage in this traffic. How many times have we seen this? The back markers getting in the way. He's really cutting through the traffic. Button, he's turning the traffic to his advantage. Reminds me of the late, great Ayrton Senna, the way the traffic just parts as he approaches. The last lap of this is the final lap of go, 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 and it's go. It's clear, and away we go. Go, go, go. One light, two lights, three lights, four lights, five lights, Pause. One, two, three, four, five. Physicella. Five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. I wonder if that trip into the country has damaged something on the underside of the car. He's probably coming into the pits to make sure there's no debris clogging up his air intakes. I think he'll be taking it steady for the next few laps, just in case he damaged anything on the bumps. There's almost no ground clearance on these cars, and he could easily have damaged something when he went off. Well, that was a very bumpy trip, and it could cause some problems. There'll be all sorts of little bits of stone and gravel sticking to his tyres now. He'll have to be very careful just until his tyres are scrubbed clean again. He should be able to get back on the track from there. Wurtz. That grassy area is a bit bumpy, but I think he'll be able to get back into the race. He's bumping over the grass to try and get back on the circuit. He's off onto the grass. Oh, he slid onto the grass. He's on the grass. Too much speed entering the bend, and he's off onto the grass. He's on the grass again. Yet again, he's on the grass. 
Keep off the grass. There's always more grip on the black stuff than the green. Alisi, 11th is... Oh, dear, he's in the gravel trap. Oh, he's off into the gravel again. Now, is he stuck? Sometimes you can drive out of the gravel. Often you can't. He may well be stuck this time. He's been in just about every gravel trap there is. It looked like he wanted to go to the beach all day. It takes a special effort to get into that gravel trap. Slides onto the grass. Slides onto the grass. Slides off into the gravel. Heidfeld goes off into the gravel. Another visit to the gravel for... It's the gravel trap again for... He's into the wall. Just smashed into the wall. That looks as though he took a piece of the wall with him. He's just clipped the wall there. That wall is very unforgiving. A glancing blow on the wall. He's ricocheted off the wall. Dinners. Oh, that's a massive impact with the wall. He's really stuffed that car into the wall. Oh, he's clipped the barrier. He's into the barrier. Stuffs his car into the safety barrier. He's bounced off the armco. Oh, my goodness, he smashed that car into the barrier. What's happening here? He stopped. I can't see what's wrong, but he stopped. Well, something's gone wrong. The car's just stopped on the track. Salo has stopped his car for no obvious reason. Hold on, he's pulling off the track. Oh no, he's parking up. Seems to have stopped for no obvious reason. I don't know why, but it looks like it's all over for... Well, he stopped the car and he's just sitting there. Heaven knows what the reason is. Pushing that car to its limits. Racing right on the edge. Pushing that car to its maximum. We're seeing some real nail-biting driving here from my heart is racing, so I can't imagine what it feels like to be in the driving seat. De La Rosa, pushing his car to its limits. I only hope it holds out. If he continues to drive like this, something's bound to give. Hold on. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, hold on a moment. Now, hold on a moment. I can tell you the Steppen. Oh, my word. Look at that. Surely he isn't. Yes. No. I don't believe it. Incredible. Gracious. Well, I never. Oh, my goodness me. Cheney. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. I don't believe it. He's going the wrong way. I don't believe it. He's going the wrong way. What does he think he's doing? He's driving round the wrong way of the track. What does he think he's doing? He's driving the wrong way round the track. That's just asking for an accident. He should be driving in the other direction. What does he think he's doing? He's driving through the pits the wrong way. He's entered the pits at the wrong end. What is he doing? That's not the entrance. Mazzacane. He's entering the pits from the wrong end. Now that's dangerous. Must have lost his mind. He's entered the pits through the exit. Must have lost his mind. He's entered the pits through the exit. He's running the risk of a penalty for attempting a shortcut there. Should be penalised for taking a shortcut there. Look at that. He's taken a shortcut. Has just taken a shortcut. That is incredible. A sneaky shortcut. From can't have stalled the car. So why is he just sitting there? Must have fallen asleep at the wheel. Why doesn't he move? Feel nerve. He's just sitting on the track without moving. There's nothing wrong with the car. So why doesn't he move it? He's asking for trouble. He really needs to move that car quickly. Has not moved and no one can understand why. Seems to have forgotten how to accelerate. He must be sleeping at the wheel. He's just waiting in his car. That is so dangerous. And he takes the chequered flag. Happy in the knowledge that he's first passed the chequered flag. He's won it and there was no question about him winning it. Except from his competitors. He comes home to a roaring reception from the crowd. Magnificent. Zonta. I bet that chequered flag is a welcome sight. There's the chequered flag. There's the winner. And there's the rest of them. The marshals show the blue flag to a driver when his car's in danger of getting in the way of faster cars approaching from behind. For instance, if he's about to be lapped. The driver being shown the blue flag is obliged to let the faster traffic through as soon as he can. A blue flag is shown to a driver who's being approached by a faster car. It's often seen when a driver is being lapped. 
If you pass three waved blues, you must move out of the way, otherwise you'll be penalised. The yellow flag is a danger signal, telling drivers to slow down because there's a problem on the track ahead. It's often seen as the result of a crash. The yellow flag will warn of debris or oil on the track, or that a damaged car is blocking the way. Drivers are not allowed to overtake when the yellow flags are being waved. Marshals use yellow flags to warn the drivers of a problem ahead. The yellow flag tells the drivers there may be oil or debris on the track, or maybe that the track's blocked by a stationary car. Overtaking is banned and you must slow down when the yellows are out. When the race needs to be stopped immediately as the result of a bad pile-up, for instance, the marshals show the red flag. The drivers must immediately slow right down and make their way to the pits. The officials can stop a race immediately by showing the red flag and a red light at the start line. For instance, after a multi-car pile-up. If the reds come out, the drivers must immediately slow down and drive cautiously back to the pits. When a dangerous incident that's required a yellow flag situation is cleared up, the marshals will show green flags to let the drivers know they can get on with the race. When it's safe to get back up to racing speed after a yellow flag situation, the marshals will wave green flags. Mika Hakkinen, 12th place for if a driver's disqualified perhaps for ignoring a stop-go penalty, he'll be shown the black flag. He must immediately drive to the pits and take no further part in the race. If a driver is shown a black flag, he knows he's been disqualified from the race and must drive straight to the pits. It looks like he's been given a stop-go penalty. He's been given a stop-go penalty. Oh, no! It's a stop-go penalty for gets a stop-go penalty. I think he's been given a stop-go penalty. Yes, he's got a stop-go penalty. It's a stop-go penalty for gets a stop-go penalty. David Coulthard. I think he made a jump start. In he comes to sit out his 10-second penalty. He's into the pit lane. This must be for his stop-go penalty. Has to pull up at his garage to serve his 10-second penalty. He's in the pit lane to serve his 10-second penalty. Here he comes to serve his 10-second penalty. He's turned into the pit lane to do his stop-go penalty. Has to stop at his pit and sit out his 10-second penalty. You've got to remember that a stop-go penalty costs the driver a lot more than 10 seconds. He has to negotiate the pit lane in and out. The driver has to be stationary for 10 seconds, but of course he loses a lot of time entering and leaving the pits. Michael Schumacher, out he goes, powering away from the pit lane, glad to get on with the race. He gets the green light and off he goes to rejoin the race. He gets the signal and off he goes to rejoin the race. He gets the signal and go, he rejoins the race. Straight off on the green light. He's got a lot of work to do to gain back that lost time. Straight off on the green light. He's got a lot of work to do to regain that lost time. Straight off on the signal, but he's got a lot of work to do to regain that lost time. He'll be desperate to claw back the time he's lost with that penalty. He's rocketing away from the pit lane, anxious to get back into the race. He gets the signal and he's off to rejoin the race. Rubens Barrichello. Gets away again. He's got a lot of work to do. Gets away again. He's got a lot of work to do. It looks like he's down to... He rejoins in... I don't believe it! He's disqualified! Has been disqualified! He really shouldn't have done that. Now he's out of the race. What a terrible move! That is surely disqualification for... He's lost his front wing! Has lost a wing! That's going to slow him up! Heinz Harold Frensen. He's going to have to visit the pits for a new nose cone. There are definite signs of damage there to the front of... There's some obvious damage to the front wing. A lot of damage there to the left front wheel. That right front wheel is broken. The rear left wheel is damaged. He smashed the right rear wheel. Hold on. Hang about. Oh, what's this? Yarno Trulli. Look at that. Just a sec. Hang on a minute. Wait a minute. He's looking sharp today. Really is on form. Is giving 100% concentration. Is doing well. Is putting on a great show. Approached that well. Teddy Irvine. Roars past. Is still very much part of the race. Seems well in control. Is still in there. Looks impressive today. Has complete control of his car. Might well surprise us yet. Is holding his own. 
has his foot to the floor, disappears into the distance. Johnny Herbert is showing no fear. Won't be beaten easily. Might well have something up his sleeve. Is putting up a brave fight here. Is doing well so far. Looks comfortable. Won't be beaten easily. Is going to take some stopping. Is performing well so far. Is running smoothly. Ralph Schumacher looks impressive. Is in top notch condition. Sounds as good as it looks. Looks very good. Is really purring today. Looks strong at the moment. Is running like a dream. Is not supposed to sound like that. Car is not on form today. We'll have to improve by next season. It doesn't look or sound at all well. Jensen Button looks shot to me. Won't be finishing this race, I'm sure. Car chugs past. It can't last much longer. May not see this one out. Mechanics will have a busy night by the looks of things. Won't be taking any points today. Looks ready to drop. Seems to be in trouble. Yep, the Pistons are having a little talk with the valves in that engine. Argentina. Giancarlo Fisichella. In 13th place we see... Australia. Austria. Belgium. Brazil. Britain. Canada, France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Alexander Wurz, Japan, Luxembourg, Malaysia, Monaco, San Marino, Spain, Europe, the Argentine, the Australian, the Austrian, Jean Alesi, the Belgian, the Brazilian, the British, the Canadian, the French, the German, the Hungarian, the Italian, the Japanese, the Luxembourg, Nick Heidfeld, the Malaysian, the Monaco, the San Marino, the Spanish, the European, the Argentine Grand Prix, the Australian Grand Prix, the Austrian Grand Prix, the Belgian Grand Prix, the Brazilian Grand Prix, Pedro Deniz, the British Grand Prix, the Canadian Grand Prix, the French Grand Prix, the German Grand Prix, the Hungarian Grand Prix, the Italian Grand Prix, the Japanese Grand Prix, the Luxembourg Grand Prix, the Malaysian Grand Prix, the Monaco Grand Prix, Mikasalo, the San Marino Grand Prix, the Spanish Grand Prix, the European Grand Prix, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Pedro de la Rosa, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, Jos Verstappen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, Marc Genet, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, Gaston Mazzacane, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, Jacques Villeneuve, 14th place is...